And I'm going to put this on Facebook Live. It'll take probably uh, 40 seconds. And then I'll let you guys know exactly when we're live. Uh, you mute your... I'm moving. I'm trying. I've been at baseball, hey, mute, basketball, mute. everything. I'm sorry. Mute your microphone while you get that situated. I, can... I know. Then then Naffy's calling me. Oh. I can't okay. do anything. <laughs> I've known it since seven year old, seven years old, guys. It's it's always been. I got eighteen things, three kids to do every sport. Are you Doug's kidding me? Doug's hey, we're getting there. Killing me, small. We're live. Let's go. <laughs> Bring it. Full court press. Bring it. All right. People spaces up mine and the guy one. I love action. Okay. Okay, boo, let's go. All right, here we go, fellas. Uh, I'm here. Welcome to celebrate Greater Peoria area's rich basketball history. Youngsters these days need to do their homework. Well, here's another chapter. This is some of the Washington legends. Okay, got a little background noise. One second. Not me. You want us to mute Boo until we until we each talk or what? Don't say that because I don't know how to mute. Oh, I have go. my daughter here just as backup. Okay. Yeah, to some goes to rock. Fellas, I've got the Washington Panthers, guys from across the river from where I grew up. These are some of the, the Panther legends. I asked them to be on. I'm so excited to do this show tonight. A lot of people have been getting on my case, smacking me across my face. What's up with the respect? Washington, what's up with the respect? Give them some love. Give them their props. So I brought them here tonight. So first of all, I got Diarikas, Sims Edwards, or you took the Sims out your name. Is it all just Edwards now? <laughs> It's, it's whatever it's whatever you want to call me at this point. <laughs> okay, Rikas. All right. And please tell everybody where you're at right now. I'm in Peoria, Illinois. I'm at home in my bedroom. Uh, been been looking forward to this all day. I'm going to be on a, on a, a call with these guys and, and you as well. In fact, your your shoes used to be in my middle school up at Sterling. So it's kind of... My middle school. <laughs> so... You know, uh, it, it's it's a blessing to actually be a part of this, and I'm I'm just happy to get everything rolling. Cool, good to see you, brother. Yes, sir. Man, I got Matt Roth. What's going on, man? Hey, how we doing? I'm doing good, shooter. Where are you at right now? Um, I'm at home here, just outside of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Um, uh, just uh, winding down after a busy day, but excited to be on the phone with these guys. Um, some of whom I played with, some I, you know, idolized growing up, and uh, and a couple who are a little younger than me. Good, good to see you. All right, Alec Peters, I know that you're the furthest away. Please let everybody know where you're at right now and what time it is where you're at. It is two o'clock in the morning right now. I'm sitting in Vitoria, Spain. If anybody here knows where that is. I'll send you guys a dollar or something. Um, but no, I'm doing well. I'm in my fourth year playing professional basketball. So I'm still blessed to have that ball, to have it keep bouncing. And um, super psyched to, to be here with these guys. These were my heroes growing up. You know, everybody here is older than me, has their names all over the record books, jerseys hanging on the wall. And, um, just as a little kid, this was, uh, this was the greatest, greatest thing for me to watch, uh, like Matt and I play and, and to hear the stories of the other three guys here. Awesome, man. I'm glad that you could make it. You look good for two o'clock in the morning. 
<laughs> but you guys don't go to the club till about that time, right? Well, if there's a club here, there's nothing, nothing like that in this little small town. So, <laughs> okay. All right. Todd Foster, where are you, my man? Good to see you. Good to see you, boo. Thank you um, for everything. Just getting back, watching my kids do their sports and um, trying to get out in the woods and do a little mushroom hunting which some people might know what that is, but don't come here if you want a mushroom hunt because I'm not going to allow you. But other than that, we're doing well. Um, it is a blessing uh, to be blessing. on here. So I, I tell you what, uh, Boo, I watch you from day one, and it is an honor, and especially an honor be with these other guys because I've heard so much. I've watched some of them growing up. And then I watched the other ones. I coached against Matt and Alex, his dad and I it went to grade school. So it is a blessing, very much a blessing. So I thank you for this opportunity. My pleasure, brother. It's um, great to meet you virtually. And I'm pretty sure in the near future, we'll have a chance to, to meet in person, man. And uh, much respect for you. Thank you, sir. All right. Okay, here's a guy that uh, I remember very well. We're both 1982 graduates in high school. And uh, I really uh, have so, again, I have so much respect for his game. And not only that, the man that he is, the family man and the person. Uh, Doug Lee, how you doing, man? Boo, I'm, I'm doing great, man. It's always good to talk with you. And I, I appreciate you doing this. I think that for me, you know, to see all these guys and to, you know, really follow them. I know Dyricus, I mean, everybody, Matt, just, you know, of course, Alec now and then and do then to idolize uh, Randy Holzhauer, you know, uh, uh, you know, we're not too far apart. Randy and I are not. But, you know, to go and watch him and stuff. Uh, when I was looking to get where he was at, you know, it's, it's just an honor, boo. I think that God has blessed, blessed me and has blessed uh, all of us, I think, just to be here today. And very thankful for the opportunity. I, you know, boo, as you and I talk, you know, often it seems like now, right, is that uh, I'm just thankful uh, for this program, thankful for what you're doing and, and bringing some, you know, more exposure to the uh, school on the other side of the river. Most deserving, most deserving. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, last but not least, Randy Holzhauer. When I was a freshman, I got introduced to Washington basketball because I believe that was the year, um, your senior year, Randy, Randy Holzhauer, that uh, Washington joined the Mid-State 10. I was a freshman and uh, you guys joined the conference. And I was like, man, these boys can play. And you were the star of stars uh, at Washington. So it's good to have you on, Randy. Thank you. I'm, I'm proud to be part of this group, too. Um, I'm the old dog. I'm sitting here looking at all you guys going, the closest one to me is Doug and everybody else. I mean, uh, Doug, I, I, I'm pre three-point line, I, you know? I mean, <laughs> I'm just... Well, I didn't get into my senior year in college, so... <laughs> I'm in between the peach basket and the uh, jump ball after every basket. Um <laughs> But I know that Doug said that he uh, watched me play when I was young. When I was young, I watched uh, my brother played at, uh, my brother Jerry played at Washington and, uh, and was on the 1972 team uh, that went to uh, the field house and lost in the sectional championship. And when I would watch, my guy was Dave Dingledine. I wanted to be Dave Dingledine. I'd go to the games as a, eighth grader with all my friends and sit up in the here at Washington and uh, watch Dave Diggledine play and uh, that was my guy. I wanted to be him. And uh, it, that's the kind of tradition we have at this school. You know, like it just goes on forever. And there's, and there's so many people before me uh, that did so much to, uh, uh, to make our program what it is. So it's good for me to be here. And I, you guys had it. 
some of you, I never met you personally, but believe me, I've been following your career because that's what we do. That's and where are you located right now, Randy? I'm in uh, beautiful new Lenox, Illinois, which is right in between uh, Joliet and Mokina off of I-80. I've lived here for uh, pretty much my whole life since I was graduating from college. Awesome. Well, you know, um, when you were talking about the history of, uh, I think, the 1972 team and some of the guys that you admired, it's a good segue into taking us back. So I'm going to keep it right here with, uh, with Randy. Take us back. Let everybody know what it was like growing up on the mean streets of Washington, Illinois. What was it like growing up? And uh, who put the ball in your crib? Who gave you the love for basketball? Who got you started? So this is your chance to let everybody know your maturation as a ball player and also pay homage to uh, some of the people that were instrumental in your success. Right. Thank you. Um, I would say, <clears throat> without a doubt, the uh, person who had the most effect on my life as an athlete is my brother, Jerry. Um, my mom and dad both grew up in Southern Illinois, about four hours south of Peoria. And I'm sure my father never played in an athletic event in his life really? where they kept or, or did anything. Um, it was my brother, Jerry, who's seven years older than me, and he brought sports to our whole family. Um, and there's a uh, Another connection, Jerry played with uh, Doug Lee's brother, Benji, uh, on that same team that I'm talking about. Um, so uh, the 72 team, those guys, used to, those guys used to drag me around. And, and if, uh, you know, Jerry was in charge of me during the day, during the summertime. So he dragged me around to the playgrounds or to the driveways. And if they if one guy had to leave, I got to take their spot and I might have only been. 10, 11, 12 years old, but I'm playing against guys seven years older than me, and uh, they beat me up uh, and taught me how to play and taught me how to be tough. And uh, actually, the same thing about Lee, probably. I mean, he was the youngest of all of them, I think, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Well, they drug his ass around everywhere, and they're always playing ball. I mean, he, he got thrown in there with older guys, you know, one right after another. And uh, But that's where I got my love of basketball, also from uh, my grade school coach, Dennis Landry. Um, when what grade school kid, did you attend? I went to St. Pat's grade school in Washington, small little school. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think if you took the Holzhauers and the Lees and then the Lees cousins, we made up about a quarter of the school. I mean, <laughs> it was a small place, but everybody's last name was either Holzhauer or Lee or you knew one or had one in your class. Um, so uh, my grade school coach, he... I don't know. He didn't even have any kids playing at the time. He was uh, just a guy who went to Notre Dame. He loved sports. And uh, he used to pick me up and, and take me and just work me out all the time. Just work me out. Um, and uh, he gave me a love for the game. Greg Martin, my eighth grade coach, um, he taught me how to be a, a man, pretty much, and take responsibility for yourself. Uh, Bob Thacker was my freshman coach at Washington. Um, he had a huge influence on me. Uh, coach Doty uh, was my coach, was my uh, you know my coach when I was a junior and a senior, and uh, those guys just knew how to run programs. They didn't, you know, it was it was before AAU. You know, everybody wasn't going out and playing AAU or playing right. travel ball or anything like that. You just had to do it on your own. And uh, all those guys had a huge influence in me, and uh, I wanted. All the people I think that had an influence in me were either a teacher or a coach. No. Well, either. Randy, let me ask you: Who were some of the the great uh, grade school teammates that you had? Grade school teammates. Well, uh, I Rodney remember Golden. all of mine. <laughs> I do too. Rod Golden, Grant Leary, uh, Bob Widmer, Don Noe, Jeff Otten. Don't do this to me. I could click through there. If you gave me more time and I wasn't on the spot, I could click through and name almost right. all of them. But, you know, it was just, uh, and then when you were going to school there, your goal was always, can I play at Washington? You know, am I going to get my opportunity to play at Washington? And everybody got their opportunity. And it was, a, uh, it's just, it's a small town, you know, in the winter time, there's not a hell of a lot to do. Basketball is a big thing, you know, like it's right. an event, like where people go. 
and uh, the kind of stuff they do and um, us being able to be a part of it. I, I don't think I ever, I don't think I ever went through guys. How about it? Was there ever a better atmosphere in the whole world than at the Panther Den when the, when the, uh, the pep band is banging it out and you on the floor and all those people start screaming. I mean, come on, man, there's nothing like that in the grade school at the high school level. There's nothing like that. There's nothing. Awesome. So, That's awesome. You know, I've talked, I've talked too much, but I'll, I'll let no, you know. No, not at all. This is your show. You guys can talk as much as you want, as long as you want. Um, so when you were in eighth grade, the head, who was the head coach at Washington when you were just coming out of high school? Who was the was head Chuck coach? Westendorf. Coach Westendorf? Okay. When he uh, left and went to Moline, Coach Doty took his spot, and that's when I was a junior. So I played two years for Coach Doty and one year for uh, Coach Westendorf. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to take it over to, uh, to D. Lee. Doug Lee, you know I know your history. You know I know mostly everything about your basketball prowess. So take us back, man. Take us back to uh, to Washington, growing up and getting or receiving the love of the game. Well, I, I think you know uh, Randy mentioned. I think going back to that '72 team, uh, you know there was a lot of guys that were that were on that team. You know I was younger. You know, I, I think. Uh, you know, basically the holes hours he talks about, I go through and I was kind of a bat boy for on the softball teams, uh, you know, for Jerry and my brother Benji and all those guys were quite a bit yeah. of that actually in our area in slow pitch softball. They, they truly were, but you know, there's just a lot of positive influences. I, you know, of course, like, like Randy said, you always, you know, leave somebody out, but I think, I think it was more for me having that tradition. You know, I don't, I don't ever know. And I know some of the guys had it and didn't have it as much as when we were younger. I mean, uh, they used to, you know, it'd be packed in the arena and people squeezing in the doors just to watch warmups when I played, you know, and, and, you know, that type of atmosphere would be literally yelling up there, close the door because you're getting cold air down on the floor and people trying to squeeze into to that, that high school arena was, was something special, you know? And so, so my love for the game grew, I think, out of being the youngest of eight kids and six boys and getting butt kicked every day and, and basically figuring, Hey, I don't like this too much and always getting thrown out there with older guys. So when you talk about, you know, likes of watching people like uh, Charlie Thomas, you know, Dingledine, I can go on and on about players, you know, Randy, my brother, Benji, uh, just the competitiveness that would go on literally uh, as much uh, at somebody's house <laughs> as it was in the gym. You know, I mean, it was, you could, you could play pickup games around our city at people's houses or so forth. You know, if you had a hoop, we were there and it didn't matter if we had to shovel snow, you know, uh, turn on headlights on a car, uh, you know, you, you would play as a kid, you would play those, the, you know, make believe against, players in high school you know of course I, I Dr. J was one of my idols growing up and so I had his poster in my in my uh, bedroom and the other day I was talking with George Irvin's brother you know Derek and so forth and reminiscing how I had that that Nike poster on the wall of, of Iceman you know so so those things yeah exactly right so I'm trying to get one signed right now I don't I don't get very much memorabilia but that's one we I had no idea how valuable it was back in 19. 19- uh, I even, had, I even had that sweatsuit, so that was one of the sweats. Hey, you know what? My brother, my brother Kevin had the, the Iceman was his guy. Yeah, that was it. yeah. So, so, so looking at people like that, and then getting to to meet them in person over the years, and, and find out that's been special. But I think Washington, for me, it was just like the competitiveness. You know, I was probably a better baseball player when I was younger than I was, you know, basketball. And, but yet, the drive to just be competitive in basketball. Um, I don't know. There was just something special about the Panther Den, you know, going into that uh, during the cold of winter and walking in this facility where there was just mayhem going on, you know, <laughs> and that competitiveness. And, you know, I remember watching Randy and, and going there and, and saying to myself internally, like, you know, that's going to be me out there. I think every player here, and I don't mean that from an arrogant perspective, but you didn't believe when you were younger that you were going to be there in some form or fashion, I don't know, confidence-wise, because you had to believe in yourself to do that. But it was always great to have people ahead that you could look at, you know. And again, you know, all these guys were great growing up, 
But when I really, really got serious about my game in grade school, I was watching Randy. You know, so for me, it was like seeing him go and, and do things on the court and realize, you know, and a lot of it booze to Peoria schools. And as young as a youngster, I was really had the privilege. A lot of guys may not have had at a younger age, but I got in with my brother Bill used to take me over to Peoria uh, when I was younger and play in the parks. And I don't know how many other guys really did that, but that was special for me because you know, he would take me over there as a younger person and just drop me off in the park and he'd play. And, and I got the experience of playing over in Peoria uh, in my grade school years that a lot of other players didn't get. And I, right. I think that helped me a lot. I really do. I think it helped me a lot competitive wise, um, but it also gave me a comfort level, you know, to realize that, uh, you know, Boo put up on his shoes the same way I did. And, you know, just those types of things. So it was uh, just a special time, special time. Um, it was some of my best years. I mean, people can talk about, and I, I'm sure Alec and everybody can attest to this going through. Um, I look back on my high school years and some of my best years in sports period, you know, so I'm very thankful for that. That is cool. Thank you, Doug. All right, Todd Foster, take us back to your Washington days, man. Um, I, like I said I, earlier, I never had a chance to meet you personally. But I've heard a lot about you and that you are a bad mother shut your mouth. So please <laughs> let everybody know what it was like growing up and who gave you the love of being uh, a great athlete. I mean, I know that you were a multi uh, sports star, but who was influential in getting you started in sports? Um. Well, I appreciate all that stuff, but, you know, I was one of those guys, like, your your hockey team, the guy that couldn't skate but just go out there and beat the crap out of everybody, that would be me. I would just – my whole – and I don't understand it nowadays, but when I compete, it's all about winning. It's about going out and getting after it and representing because when I lost a game – I felt bad for like Coach Doty, my teammates, my town. I let them down. That was my whole getup. I let my dad and my mom down when we lost the game, and I still feel like that today. On okay, anything I do. let me interject for a second. That that mindset. Where did you get that mindset from? Who 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 gave that to you? Was it was it your dad? Was your dad a baller? Was it your mom? Was it a yeah, uncle? my dad? Yeah. Pardon me? He was a dairy farmer. So, yeah. When you didn't do things right, you had that hand right behind your neck. Yeah. That was called. Okay. You just, you just, hey, go do this. Boom. And you learned to do it. And I didn't want to let him down. I just, that was the whole mindset. I don't know. I don't know, understand it. Doug might know. He's my brother in law. He was there when I was little. Um, it's a just a different way of growing up, but I'm just telling you, I just had the mindset when I played for Coach Katie or Coach Doty, I didn't want to let anybody down and anybody I went against, it was on. I went after them. I don't care who scores. It's all about the W at the end of the game. And and it, it, nowadays, I preach it differently when I do individual workouts. Um, and I'm trying to be more relaxed on it. But it is hard for me because I'm a, just a go-getter. You, it, It's all about the W. That's what you see. And, and that's what my mindset was when I played even in grade school or whatever. And I was blessed, but again, we grew up different. We grew up in the country. We went to Pleasant View at 68 kids, K through eight. And I mean, and you were laying it, it on. Too. I, some kid told me that you, you scored like 50 in a grade school game. It's yeah. Three times. Like 20, yeah. 24 but I don't minutes. care about Man. that. I used to score 50 won. points. Yeah. 24 minutes. I'm gonna, I don't uh, care about, you know, I don't care about the scoring. I don't care about records. If somebody knows about records, then they're in the, for the wrong reason. You can ask me anything. I just say you lay it on people when you were in grade school. 
Exactly. So, That's what I did. I mean, it's all about the game. Before you even came to high school, everybody already knew who you were. So, so Boo, I got I got to interject here a second, okay? Because I've known Todd since he was seven years old. So, I know when he says maybe his his dad, uh, Fred, who was just an awesome, awesome guy, passed away years ago. He was an incredible football player. You know, he won the All Sport Award there. Help me out, guys. What's the All Sport Award there at Washington that you win? Um, Todd won that too. His dad was definitely. Uh, just hard nose. I say this, and I don't say it because it's my brother-in-law. I say it because it's a fact. In any sport I've ever played, at any level I've ever played, Todd Foss is the toughest athlete I've ever seen. And I think, I think from, wow. and Coach Katie would tell you that, and a lot of people would tell you that. I think of all the guys here on the screen, of a multi-sport athlete, he could have been. I, I know it. I mean, he turned on college division one football scholarships at major universities. And he just, everything Todd always did since a kid, he told him he couldn't do something, he was going to do it. So, you know, everybody said, I'm not sure if he's going to play basketball in college. So I think that motivated him to say, I'm going to play basketball in college. And he was good at it, you know, but I do believe to this day, he could have been an NFL player for sure. And I've seen, I know a lot of them and uh, he was just tough as can be, but that competitiveness, he was always that way, no matter what. Every time, you know, I go somewhere to the gym, he tag along. And he just had that never die attitude. And uh, no, I mean, it. he's the toughest, toughest athlete I've ever seen in my life. You know, he's a guy that gets on and, and wins rodeos. They used to hassle him with Sports Illustrated. You know, he was a lot of things to talk about his rodeo days and all that. That's for real. I mean, he won underneath the NFR. He would never tell you this, but he won nationals uh, in an event. And I think, what was the cap wrestling? I don't even know. Steer wrestling. Steer wrestling. And, you know, and tore his MCL before he had his last run and still won the darn thing, you know. And, and I've seen him with broken hand, fingers and just keep on going. So when, you know, I was, I guess, in a small town, we're all country, but yet he was definitely raised out in the country. And I was more the city boy and then got used to that being going out there. And, you know, I always had the tassel corn and, and all those things and, you know, uh, uh, throw, throw hay, hay bales all the time. But he's, he's just a tough guy. Todd is who he is. And. I think that he proved that through hard work, anything can be accomplished, you know, because I think of all the guys on the screen here, we probably all had a little bit more of basketball skills God given at time. He just had skill. He was athletic, just go after it, but just tough as nails. So, you know, I think everybody knows that on the screen. It's like the guy just got it done, you know, and so uh, I think it was a great representation of the toughness, you know, at Washington, because I think Matt, and guys after him and so forth knew, you know, like he's, he, he's just tough, you know, and that, I think that probably helped those guys and Dyrikis, everybody, you know, to realize that that was a standard to kind of reset a new standard. <laughs> well, Doug, I, I did my homework and everything you just said uh, um, was echoed by several people. So kudos to you, Todd. Kudos, man. I'll play you. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, you're going <laughs> to score 20 on me, but I might – Take a charge. That's all. You I still can playing do. now? Cause I, I, hey, you still playing now? I, I still play, man. Yeah, I play uh, against my ten-year-old son. So yeah, uh, and that's why I take my charges. Body. I can't move. My knees are dumb, but man, I will still put my nose in it. But you know, you can. Don't let the him kids win. nowadays they want their nose in iPads. <laughs> it drives me nuts. Yes, it's a, it's a different era, no doubt. Oh, well, all right. I got to switch over. Win, uh, don't let him win until he earns it, Todd. Don't let him win until he earns it. My brother, uh, Jerry, he beat me up in one-on-one -on -one games at my house my entire life. And the first time I beat him, when I was probably, I don't know, 14, he had never played me again. Yep. He, he well, shut it down. I got shot by BB guns by my, yeah, my brother. <laughs> yeah, that was a game. And I got hit. King, Todd King and my brother Scott just shoot me BB guns and then you're out, you know. So now <laughs> we might do up, that with my kids. Up, I'm telling you, you know. I love it. I ain't gonna lie, I love it. Oh yeah, I got hit. It, 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 it hurt, but I had to play with them. <laughs> still do it today. Right. I'd still do it. I have no right. idea what these guys are talking about. <laughs> well, I gotta go up here to uh my brother, Matt Roth, man, shooter, take us back, man. Take us back to the mean streets of Washington. 
Kirk oh, man, it was, <laughs> it was, I mean, it was great. I mean, just hearing these guys talk, you know, brings back a ton of memories, um, you know, from my basketball roots. Um, dad started a lot of that. Um, I mean, he was, uh, it still is a storyteller. Um, you know, Todd, I mean, Todd was a legend. I, I still think, I mean, the echo of, you know, you may have played well tonight, but th this guy at Purdue would have locked you up. <laughs> like, I, I know, but I'm not trying. I'm getting there. Um, and, and so he would tell the stories, you know, growing up, taking us to games. You know, there's no better feeling as a kid than, you know, walking into the Panther Den and, and watching guys play, older guys play, watching them compete. Um, you know, my middle school um, program was was phenomenal. Mike and uh, Dave Adams over at Washington Middle School, um, you know, they, they knew – every record they knew everything about every guy the stories they could tell me about Doug and, and Todd as they came Doug. through you know Washington um, they just instilled a fire in me and then um, you know as I got a little bit older in middle school um, you know going to those Washington games and studying the record books and, and seeing their name on almost every category um, it just it just fueled me to, to learn more to watch more you know I've still my mom says, I mean, she's got every everything I've ever owned probably in her house still. Um, there's a Doug Lee basketball card in there somewhere. I know I need to <laughs> need to pull that out and get it signed, I think. But uh, I mean, just uh, growing up, I mean, it was it was all about, you know, learning about the guys who went before me, the guys who were, you know, kind of laid the foundation for what Washington basketball meant. Um, and, and, you know, there was a lot of opportunities. My parents weren't afraid to send me places. Um, I mean, I can still remember. Um, you know, growing up in the, you know, Sergio McLean uh, days there at Manuel, I can remember going to games. I can remember, you know, getting dropped off camp for the week over there at Peoria Manual, um, where, I mean, it was a, a who's who of, of Central Illinois basketball and, and going in there. And I didn't, I didn't know any better. I went in there, shot the ball, competed, uh, made some good friends who later turned into great rivals in the high school. Um, as, as we got older um, and, and got to compete against a lot of those guys. And um, that kind of laid the foundation. Um, and then, you know, high school um, was one of those unique situations. Had a, a, a new coach coming in, Kevin Brown. Um, you know, didn't really know what to expect as an incoming freshman. I, he took me to the, the one tournament that summer, and, and he threw me out there against two-time defending state champs in Central. And, about two minutes later, pulled me out, sat me down, and said, you're not ready, and just left me sit wow. the rest of the weekend. Um, and, and that was kind of eye-opening because, you know, we we hadn't competed. I, had, I hadn't played with some of these guys that I was with at the high school level. And, um, you know, that was, a, that was a harsh reality after after middle school and thinking, you know, being excited about what's next in high school. And, um, you know, that kind of that, – that, again, rekindled that fire to – to not back down and, and keep working and, and be able to prove myself by the time the season came around. You know, I, I did see that you joined uh, Washington or enrolled at Washington the same time Kevin got, Kevin Brown got the job. So yep. that had to be uh, special to, you know, your first four years were his first four years and very successful years, I might add. So – that yeah, it was uh, it was great coming in at that time, and I can still remember um, we were at um, Illinois State team camp. Um, Nick Romo, Sean Johnson, um, some of those guys who turned into great players at Washington, and we went over and got blown out by I think it was Fieldcrest um, in in their varsity shootout. Uh, Fieldcrest, kind of a J Fieldcrest, Minunc little one A school. They waxed our but and I can remember coming over the huddle and uh, and Nick Romolo's sister was coaching us and she got down after she chewed our butts and said, and the worst thing about it is your new head coach is here and he's going to cut everyone. In. Um, and so we not knowing who they had hired, you know, this is before, you know, the world of social media and, and updates instantly. We had no idea. We we're looking around the gym, like, I hope it's, you know, who is it? Um, and, you know, from that point on, though, um, it just became a, you know, almost like a, a second father to me as a coach. Um, I can still remember first game uh, that I got to start in the Pekin Holiday Tournament. He moved 
called me into his office uh, with Nick Romolo, who was our sophomore point guard, and said, I'm going to start a freshman tomorrow. Um, I haven't unpacked in my house. If this doesn't work out and I get fired, you guys are moving me out. And, <laughs> you know, I, I'd like wow. to think now he was joking, but um, you never know. Um, but, right. you know, the rest was history. Uh, you know, we went out and competed um, with the team out of Texas that night and then, you know, turned the season around and, and – Eventually, that led to just four great years of, of Washington basketball. Awesome. Awesome. I got to go down to uh, – Hey, Boo, can I, can I tell my Matt Ross story really quick? Please. Go I right ahead. I to tell a Matt Ross story. So, um, I'm coaching my son um, in eighth grade basketball, eighth grade, you know, Catholic grade school basketball. And I took the whole team down to Peoria. And this was when the field was still there. And uh, I think it might have been a shootout or something. I don't think it was a tournament. It was a shootout or something. And, Matt, you might remember this, but you guys played Washington of Chicago. So it was like Washington yep. playing Washington in the first round. You remember that? Yep, so, junior year, I'm, first game of the year. Uh, huh? Junior year, first game of the year. Yes. So – I've got my whole squad there, all my kids, and I'm telling them about you the whole way on the ride down, you know. And the game starts, and they get off to a 9 to nothing lead. They're ahead 9-0. And it's like a minute and a half gone in the game. And they're all kind of looking at me like, well, okay. So next time down the floor, you pull up for a three, just a regular three, boom. They come down, miss. You come down and fire from between the rings on a college floor. It had to be a 35-foot shot. It was in the air for two or three seconds. Nothing but cords. Now it's nine to now it's nine to six. They come down, miss. You come down again and, and threw up like a LeBron shot. Like like just past just past the circle. And it was in the air for so long that we're looking at each other like, oh my God, we're already high fiving because we know it's gonna go in. And it does. And now it's nine to nine. And they call timeout, and their coach runs out and is yelling at this kid that's supposed to be guarding you. And I'm thinking, nobody guards anybody that far from the floor. How are you going to yell at him for that? You know, like you just you you drop three threes that were bombs for a high school player. I mean, for any player. And uh, All day. I lived to be a hundred. I'll never forget that. My kids were like, "Oh God, he's so good." I'm like, "Yeah, that boy can shoot." I love it. I love it. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I mean, that was that was a great that was a great game, great memory. Oh, and I think you know the airtime between those shots was probably trying to just give Dyrikis time to, to move his stuff across to Washington <laughs> to get him over there to join the party the next year. <laughs> well, that's a good segue into Dyrikis <laughs> because whenever I see him, I always give him the blues about leaving my alma mater. To go across the river, and you might have been a pioneer, Dyricus. You might have been the first to go, a brother to go across the river and play. Could have been anybody else, <laughs> except for you that did it first. So, Dyricus, I wish I could say take us back to growing up in Washington, but you were a Peoria boy. Yeah. So, take us back to how you uh, got involved in the game. I know a lot about you but everyone that's watching may not know. So take us back like people are just meeting Dyricus for the first time and right. let us know how you got involved in the game of basketball that defined you. Yeah, well, I got definitely got involved with um, basketball from my dad, of course. Uh, I was lucky enough to have what's, my dad. What's your dad's name? Me. I know his name, but what's your dad's name? My dad is Michi Edwards, Demetrius Edwards, call him Michi. He coaches uh, actually at the um, varsity girls there. My sister also plays and as well. So we get all our pedigree from our dad. And uh, Yeah, my dad had me at a super young age. So he had me, he was 14 years old. So when I was wow. growing up, when I was growing up, for me, growing up, I was just central, central, central line, born and bred. And so growing up, that's who I saw. My dad, I remember being at his high school game. I remember, you know, all the players on, I remember remembered all the players on manual, you know, things like that. Cause I used to be in my room 
and I would just reenact Manual Central game every day. Always make Manual lose, no matter what. <laughs> Sergio, Frank, uh, Marcus, um, you know, Howard, um, all those guys were being my imagination playing against mm-hmm. those guys as my dad. So that's the way it kind of all started for me. And then later beyond that, it was guys like Sean uh, Livingston um, being a ball boy for those teams and Jamar Smith and uh, Terrence Smith and a lot of guys growing up. I can I can go down that list all day or your guys like you. Like I said, seeing your shoe in the in the glass, I want to shoot in the glass. You know, I want to be like that. I want to find shoes and put them in the glass and buy the kids like you did for me, you know. And so by the time I got in a grade, to even get into the the Washington thing, um, that was when I first even found out about Washington. Like I said, I didn't even know. Only orange and black I knew was manual. And, and I was in eighth grade, and I went down. I was the ball boy still at Central. And uh, I think it was eighth grade, yeah. And Matt, yeah, you were a freshman. And long story short, at the time, they beat they beat us, right? So I'm like, what? I'm like, who is that? Who is that guy? I'm asking my dad, who is that guy, number 30? Like, who is that? Like, who is Washington? Who is that guy down there? Who's coaching them? He was crazy. Who is that? You know, like, man, how they beat us? Like, who is that? And my dad's like, that's Matt Roth. Um, yeah, that's Matt Roth. And I'm like, that's Matt Roth. He a freshman? He's like, yeah, he a freshman. I'm like, wow. So I didn't even know anything about Washington beyond that, but they beat us and I couldn't believe it. So uh, just to segue into high school, um, I mean, like I said, my my peers and my best friends, um, we all drove each other, fueled each other as well. And I always had my dad and my mom there for me to, you know, keep me on the straight and narrow and keep me motivated and keep me able to being able to focus on what I needed to focus on to, you know, be able to succeed and do well. And I was like, you know, I didn't want to let them down either. That was my main thing. I didn't want to let them down. And I always wanted to be successful because of them. Like that was my driving force. And once I got sisters, they became a part of the driving force. So it's like they added to the fire too. So, and so on, so on. Okay. So you're at Central. And I remember this was the first year I started the camp, my, my basketball camp. Mm-hmm. And I tried to hire a lot of the great players in the area. And I hired DJ Richardson. And I knew that DJ also went to our grade school, Sterling. Correct? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. And with that being said, coming back for that, for his senior year, the two of you together, I was happy. I was like, oh, man, we got a chance. We got a chance to get to the Civic Center. And then all of a sudden, DJ works my camp, and he tells me, man, I'm, I'm getting ready to go to this school in Las Vegas. And I'm like, what school is that? He said, Finley Prep. It was the first time I ever heard of it. So he, that's what he eventually did. He went to Finley Prep, and then you went across the river. So yeah. I don't know if you want to talk about that or not, but how did you go across the river? Because like I said <laughs> earlier, a lot of brothers wasn't doing that. <laughs> yeah, like I said, like I had a, I didn't like I put that out there that I didn't like manual. So because I was central, so I couldn't go to manual. And Richwood right. wasn't going to Richwood. And like growing up, Coach Bisher was like the coach that you know I I saw, and you know I was like, man, I'm gonna play for him. My dad played for him. My uncles, like my uncle, played with. Mike I Hughes played for him, yeah. And Chris Reynolds and, you know, all those guys, Charles he White. He left right after Sean Livingston's second championship, correct? Right. He retired. That, I literally cried when he left. And my dad, my dad cried. So, yeah, and so I'm like, man, but it was cool. You know, I'm, it didn't matter, you know. So I get to Central and, you know, everything is everything. And, and it just wasn't working out by my sophomore year. Mind you, me and DJ, we are best friends, you know, still to this day and since fifth grade. And so we have been playing with each other pretty much all of our lives up to that point, you know. And uh, we get to Central in my sophomore year, 
it was just it wasn't panning out. I didn't mean, feel like my role was being established enough. Um, as far as what I wanted for me, one of the only times in my life probably that I felt like that. Like, I need what I to do for me. And so, long story short, I remember you had to get in that portal. I understand. Yeah, I had to get in that. I had to get in that that bubble. And so, <laughs> I um, I started to go to a couple open gyms in a place called Washington. You know, that one place that that beat us in eighth grade. You know, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm like, man, I gotta I gotta get up close and personal with them. I want to know. And I get there. I can. I'll never. Like I'm, I'm like okay, I'm going to Washington. Like at the end of the day, it's gonna be not gonna be that hard. You know right. what I'm saying? It's not gonna be that hard. Like what do I know about Washington? It's a little small town. I'm, I'm athletic. I'm fast. Okay, whatever. So I get to open gym, and I want to guard Matt. I'm already wanting to guard Matt the whole way there. I'm like I want to guard Matt. I, don't, I just want to play against them on the garden. And so, yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> there, and, you know, he coach, you there. coaches, coaches kind of nice, real nice. At the, you know, real, like, you know, get out there. He knew what he, what I was getting myself into. I didn't know. So I get out there. So, <laughs> and it's about, I give it five possessions. Like, like the, the way the basketball was played for me was a way that it was never played before. I mean, bodies move, screens. Matt is just picking me apart, like without dribbling, like not even dribbling the ball, having a field day pretty much, just coming <laughs> off screen and everybody's screening. I'm, I'm so tired on defense, I get to offense, it's like, man, I'm thinking about defense, like. <laughs> I got to get ready for defense because I got to go down here and guard this. This is like a machine, an open gym. It's like a machine. And I'm just, <laughs> goodness, what is, like, okay. And so at the end of it, I'm like, man, I feel like it's a, it's, this is a chat. All right. So I'm in the car with my dad. And uh, Matt know what he did. So, you know, it, it doesn't even have to be said. So I'm in the car with my dad, like, <laughs> My dad, like, what you think? What you think? I'm like, I'm like I want to go there. I'm like, I want to go there. I said, that's where, that's where, that's where I want to go. Like, just because I had never been put through the ringer like that that fast, and it was like I was learning basketball without even trying to learn basketball. So, and then on top of that, the way Coach Brown was coaching was just like. He reminded me a lot of Coach Bishop. Like, it was, like, perfect for me. So I was like, man, these guys, it wasn't just the Matt Roth show. It was, like, it was it was different. It was, like, a lot of accountability. A lot of guys playing basketball, talking, a lot of communication. It was, I later found out, it was a lot like a college practice or college intensity level. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm like, man, I, I want to go there because regardless of what coach, I didn't know exactly how coach felt about me or not, but I just knew being in that system, I would be challenged in a way that would uh, not stump my growth or my, or my uh, potential. Um, I felt like it was something that would only get the best out of me because on the first day, it showed me all my flaws pretty much. Well, you know what? It turned out to be uh, an excellent decision for you. The two of you guys team up the next year and arguably the best backcourt in the state, without a doubt. I mean, yeah. Matt, you, you averaged 21, 22 points a game that year. And uh, Dyreek is with 17 or 18 points a game. And you guys go all the way to uh, the Final Four, Class 3A. You run into a very tough Marshall uh, team. And then in the uh, third place game, Matt, you ended up uh, going up against your future teammate, Verdell, uh, Verdell Jones Jr. Jr. Yep. And yep. Um, I don't think what I saw was uh, that's the furthest that 
Washington had been since 1909. So the two of you uh, joining up, it was a good decision for you, Dyrene. And we got to play Central. The DJ left my going into uh, senior year, but junior year, the year I left, uh, we got to play Central in the, was it the sectional? I think it was the sectional. Sectional semifinal, yep. Yep, and we waxed them. So how was that? Were, were people calling you a traitor? <laughs> oh, they were calling me traitor, 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 traitor. All my, all my friends. Yeah. yeah, we got them though. Yeah, well, we you had know, about twenty five hundred fans in there that had your back too was, that night. So it was crazy. It was crazy. There's people that say the grass is not always greener, but actually it was. So good for you, Darikus. Good for you, man. Thank you. <laughs> All right, I got to go up to the baby of the bunch. Alec Peters, you know I know everything about you, man. And uh, I'm just going to let you tell everybody what was it like growing up in Washington. Uh, Washington is a, a town of, what, 14, maybe 15,000, if I'm not mistaken. Small town. And – but – they get respect for basketball. It's a basketball city. They're good in football, but it's a basketball city. What was it like growing up in Washington? And who put the ball in your crib? Yeah, so uh, I grew up a stone's throw from a Pleasant View grade school, Todd. So I have to go ahead and mention that for, <laughs> for you and uh, my dad, who uh, both went there growing up. And... Um, but yeah, I uh, I love telling this story because everybody assumes it was my dad, right? Because my dad coached me from the beginning, you know, ever since, you know, travel team, in-house, all the way up AAU, up until I left for college, he was my coach. And uh, but my mom always has to make me mention that she was the one that signed me up for my very first basketball um, league, I think, when I was, you know, four or five years old, whenever that was. And um, so I always have to give her that credit for, for she was the one that initially put the, put the ball in my hands and my dad just kind of took it from there. And like I said, has coached me, you know, still coaches me to this day, even though, you know, professional basketball may be a little bit out of his wheelhouse. He still, you know, is able to offer some advice for me here and there, which is, you know, always appreciated. But I mean, growing up um, as a kid in Washington, um, you looked forward to Friday night because that was the time that I got to, and me and my friends, we got to go watch Dyrika Sims Edwards and Matt Roth play basketball. And that was like what we looked forward to the entire week, sitting in class, talking about it, talking about the game the week before, who they're going to play on, on the next Friday. It was just, it was everything that we, you know, would go out on recess and then we'd try to be like these guys. And um, that was what, you know, always made, you know, growing up in Washington super special for me is that I had these guys who were, who are my heroes from day one, you know, everybody wanted to, you know, be a, you know, a fireman or policeman or Superman was like their hero. Like my hero was like, was Matt Roth, Sean Johnson, you know, these dudes that were, that were playing before me. And for me to be able to not only like have that, but continue it, you know, for the, for the next guy after me was uh, probably one of the coolest things that I can, I can look back on it and talk about. And, um, you know, I give a lot of credit to my dad because, um, you know, he was my coach, but he also pushed me, making me play against older guys. Like I remember, you know, we were playing with the traditional Washington travel teams and I was playing with my friends. But I think, you know, as I got a little bit older and I started to really commit to loving and wanting to play the game, he he was pushing me to play against older competition. I was playing with, you know, Peoria travel teams now in the summer for middle school and, and uh, to prepare myself for what you know, eventually, you know, I'd be playing against if I did get the chance to play um, as a freshman on, on the varsity team in high school. So he prepared me. Um, and a lot of the times when I was younger, I didn't understand it. You know, I wanted to play with my friends. I wanted to be around them more, but he knew, you know, he must have just knew something was something good was going to happen. So he was always pushing me from that young age. And when I carried it on into, into high school, I was I was such a late bloomer because I think my freshman and sophomore year, I didn't, you know, I wasn't playing a ton of minutes for, for the varsity team. I was a little bit here and there, but um, I 
you know, lucky enough, grew three inches and was six, 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 seven by the time I was a junior in high school. And, you know, finally got a little bit of, of athleticism and mobility about myself. And, you know, the rest is history. Now I'm, you know, been playing basketball now for 20 plus years and I still get to do it to this day. Who were some of the, uh, the great coaches that you had in middle school and some of the players that you uh, played with? Yeah, so, I mean, probably the very first, you know, one of my first childhood friends, like forever friend, Grant Johnson, who older brother, Sean Johnson, played with Matt. Um, you know, me and him still talk about, we used to, you know, run a, a mean pick and roll back when we were in third, fourth grade. So I don't think anybody could have stopped that. Um, so that, that's probably one of my earliest memories of playing with him. Um, Troy Adams, whose um, dad was also Matt's middle school coach. Uh, I think either seven and seventh grade, I think was, it was his dad. And, uh, you know, those guys, they were, they were my best friends so those guys. growing up. And, uh, you know, those memories, those are, those are the things that last forever playing with them growing up. And then when I started playing with those teams from Peoria, I played with guys like Preston Wells, um, who, you know, mm -hmm. obviously Boone, Dyrikas, I'm sure yeah, you're familiar with him as well. Um, you know, they contributed so much to my growth as a player because before then, before playing with, with guys like Preston, like, you know, the speed and the athleticism that, you know, maybe you were, you, you didn't see as much when you were just playing in, in Washington and in, in mm -hmm. around your friends, you like being able to be exposed to that as an early age is what just gave me so many more, so much more year years of, uh, of experience, I think, and put me ahead of my, of the guys in my grade in terms of basketball playing and so I'm I'm truly thankful that that I was able to see both sides of it you know both sides of the river as you as you want to as you'd like to say right <laughs> right um I gotta look at uh, hey hey boo can I tell my Alec Peter story absolutely hey you know look right. here fella you know what at this point you guys just go ahead if there's anything that you want to talk uh, about, I'm just going to tell my go right ahead. Uh, I'm old. I just turned 60. So, you know, I Washington basketball has been everything to me, and I always follow. And we used to go to the Tournament of Champions. And Sean and my brother Roger and these other guys, they, they got the, – that Tournament of Champions is a, a sweet deal. I mean, yes. it's it's a great tournament. You got right. like some of the best players in the country. Zion played there for like two or three years in a row, and a bunch of other guys. And Alec Peters was the only guy, not only guy. He's the first guy from Washington that dunked on people. You know what I mean? Like, I'd get a dunk once in a while, but it'd be like a breakaway. They would throw it out in front of me, and I grab it. And there's nobody around. I dunk. Alec Peters used to dunk on people. And I think a lot of it is what he says about how he just uh, – he grew like three or four inches. Like, you are probably a guard before, right? Like, most of the time you had to – when you find – he's a matchup Yeah, I was small. That, that's I was small why he's skinny. a good basketball player because he's a matchup nightmare for everybody. I mean, you can't – you know, he's a great outside shooter, but if you're going to come out and, and close him, he's going to go right by you and take the ball to the basket. And there's not a lot of guys like that. And that's why he still gets to play a kid's game and get paid for it while the rest of us are selling insurance. So that's, that's my Alec Peters story. Yeah, was, honestly, it's like you wore people asses out. And I got to tell my Diarica story, too. And that is I've never seen anybody with such a motor in my life. Like Diarica's, Diarica's would play – ridiculous defense on one end and then run down on the other end and play ridiculous offense. And I used to think to myself, is this guy run marathons? Like is his <laughs> guy's got like lungs. He must have lungs like the size of a, a boat or like, I mean, come on, man, nobody. And at the end of the game, he would just wear people out. He'd just get to whoever was guarding him would just get to the end. And he'd just like, he'd, he'd score all the points at the end of the game. He'd, he'd get, as soon as somebody would turn, as soon as you get his guy turned, he would stop and just shoot a jump shot. It's over with, right? I mean, that's my Dyrica story. He was just like, you were so much stronger and quicker and faster than everybody else. It, it was all, it almost wasn't even fair. 
like when you went to Bradley, I thought you should be going some more even harder than that. But Ooh, ouch. Great career, but I'm not ouch. saying that you didn't have a great career. Bradley, and Bradley is a great place to go. I, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying. <laughs> right. You said it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I, I, know. I, know. I, know right, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. What are you gonna do? Beat me up? <laughs> no. <laughs> Boo, I, I guess I guess part of this, right? And Randy, Randy's right. A lot of ways, I think Bradley. I I, I know we all have, you know, grew up and loved watching Bradley. So, um, but I kind of wanted, I guess, this time kind of take and, and pay my respect to each guy. I think I think the thing is, you know, I talked a lot about Todd and so forth, and kind of went in through that already. But you know, I'll kind of go through a little bit, maybe. Uh, uh, no particular order, but I know Matt, I think that Matt was, uh, for me, you know, Washington was known for shooters, right? And I think that, sure. I think the reality of it was, is that, yeah, we didn't have the, the three point shot when we played. Um, it wasn't, you know, you just pulled up from the hash mark, you just shot, you know, you didn't know. I mean, we shot deep, we, you know, we always took pride in doing those things, but I think Matt was kind of one, of, uh, and Todd, you know, Todd was a heck of a shooter. I, I think Matt was probably, I think, you know, I'll just speak with, I think one of the best pure shooters that Washington has ever had, you know, and or, I, anywhere, really. or anywhere. Any and I think, I think, you know, he did go to Indiana, which was highly disappointing to me as a Purdue guy, but, <laughs> so, no, but, but, you know, to, to tell you, to tell you how involved, you know, and I, and I don't follow people. I watch football more than I watch basketball these days, just because I watch basketball. And I think guys can relate to that. It frustrates the heck out of you sometimes watching the way people play or, you know, how the games go. I don't know if anybody else ever shares that, you know, similar experience because then you feel like you should be coaching, right? But but I think Matt, for me, was a guy that, you know, when he, his senior year and however, Matt, I don't need to get in all that politics and what happens. We know politics at the highest level. I think Boo can attest to that. Everybody has been in, in basketball can understand it, but I think the levels that you go to at a major, major college, uh, I was saddened when when Matt went through the situation of not playing that one more year because I think uh, it would have kind of changed the landscape in a lot of ways uh, for him as a, as a player because he was a great player. But, you know, and, and, but I always look at that just to know, like personally, just like saddened by that situation. And I'm not here to bash Indiana or anything else going on. But the reality was it was disappointing for Washington basketball because I looked and I'm sitting here, of course, we're building up everybody, you know, Dyrikas, it's like, uh, and I just felt that I mean, I'll get to Dyrikas in a second, but I think for Matt, it's like, it was, uh, you know, it was always, when you look at a player and you go like, man, I'm proud to be from that place, you know, and a lot of people look at, you know, guys pioneering and saying, well, you know, Doug, you're the first one to go out and play, you know, professionally at that level. After you do that, boo, everybody gets this, right? After you do that, it's not about you anymore. It's about seeing the next generations do what they do. And I, that's why I was so proud of Todd and what he did and so proud of Matt to go along with that. And then, you know, going into Dyrikas, I think that, you know, Dyrikas, you came your junior year, as I recall. Uh, and, boo, you touched on it earlier and kind of made light of it. But I think it was a huge step. From, for the diversity to have Dyrikas in a Panther uniform. You know, I'm, I don't ever avoid that subject. I think it was something that uh, was long overdue. I think it's something that he, you know, the pressures and stuff he even felt from that, I'm sure at times, whether he says it or not, I know it's real. And, and, I, and I respect him a lot for that. I respect him a lot for coming in and just playing Panther basketball. And I think that the reality of it is, is that, you know, you talk about accolades. I mean, Dyrikas, you know, uh, I think he's, you know, the top 25 in scoring at Bradley. See, Dyrikas, I, I see these things, right? I, a lot of things. I know he was all defensive, everything. You know, I don't, I don't want to leave anything out, so I won't, I won't, you know, mention everything. But, but I think he, you know, Dyrikas. I'm not sure, uh, and, and I, and I pray for everybody here on the screen, and, and just thankful for you guys, you know, being here. But it's a part where, you know, you had a huge impact. In, in the diversity and, and for me as a player and becoming at a professional level or in the NBA and you look and say, you know, I kind of flip the script to kind of become a minority uh, within the NBA, <laughs> you know, uh, and looking in the reverse of what Dyrikas and I never say that I ever walked in any shoes that Dyrikas or Boo that you have, but I do think it was critical. I think it was awesome to see, you know, I, I even bragged about it a lot, you know, saying, hey, we don't have all white guys over here in uniforms. We've got I've got a brother who's in there, and I, I, yeah. I, love, I love him for it. So, so Dyrikas has the distinction of being the first black player 
at uh, Washington? Is no. he the Jackie Robinson no. of, uh, no. of there, Washington there, basketball? There, there, was a, there was other guys. There was other so, guys. This one was really good. Yeah, yeah there was. But the, but the reality was – uh, made an impact. Yeah, but I felt to the level of what Dyrikis did and accomplished in his career – um, I thought was substantial, and I'm not taking away from anybody else because there definitely was other players, and and I and I appreciate them. I just I just think the level that Dyrick has continually played at, you do you do stick out, right? And I and I think like any player, Matt Ross, Matt Ross sticks out because you know he's playing above the level of everybody else, and I think that's that's something I just I wanted to mention that because I think it's important, but then. Past that, Dyer just became a Panther basketball player, right? right. And, and for me, that was important because, but, you know, I, I just want to acknowledge, like, I think, you know, his career is incredible as, as Matt's was and everybody else here. Uh, you know, Randy, I talked about, I think Randy was probably uh, a crazier, better athlete than a lot of people really realized, you know, how good an athlete that Randy Oles are, uh, was uh, to watch. And that's what I always looked up for is the athleticism. Um, and Randy knows how much I love him and, and how much I've looked, I've said it all my life, how much I've looked up to him and, and still do uh, uh, and, and appreciate him. Uh, I think I think in Alec, I remember Alec, you may not remember this, it was your junior year and I actually came back for a game um, and talked to you down on the court, but I had, an, I had a little discussion with your coach afterwards because uh, he knew you were good, but I said to him, that's the best, one of the best Panther players to ever walked through here in his junior year. And you may not have been that yet, but I saw it when I watched you play back at that game. And I said, you know, yes, number one, you can't teach height, you know, uh, but, but the reality is he's not just tall, he's good. And, and I think as a, as a professional athlete um, from size, skill, everything Bill to do, I think that uh, Alec is, is probably the best. You know, and, and I say that because of uh, I know um, it moves you into a different slot, that power forward or small forward, I should say. But, you know, a lot of people don't realize, like, Alec, I think for me, um, I know his brother. His brother is just an awesome, awesome young man. And, and I think that uh, for me, watching Alec play, I think he had all the tools. I mean, to me, Alec knows how it is, right, Alec? We got paid a lot more overseas than we did sitting on the bench in the NBA. At least I did. And, and, you know, so, so once, once those paychecks started rolling in, I didn't care about going back to the NBA and have that minimum wage contract. It's a little different now, but, but, but I think very, well, very blessed. I will say right. I'm very blessed. Yeah, so, so everybody else can talk about Alec Peters yeah. you know, being overseas. I, <laughs> I lost, I lost money for right. three, three to four years playing in the NBA, uh, uh, double I was make overseas. So, so I know you're living, I know you're living large and, and getting well taken care of in the city and so forth. And so, but I, you know, I also think Alec in the right situation could be a 12 to 15 year NBA veteran. And I, and I, yeah. I, I, I salute yeah. him. I salute him because he understood something. I chased something to keep coming back. My agents, Kevin Gamble, Craig Elo, all these people saying, Doug, you're going to play for years in the NBA. So I was young and kind of chasing those things. I really respect that Alex made a decision um, because he has made a decision to, to stay overseas and play and support best for his family and those things because it's, it's smart to do that. So I, I just, I saw him play his junior year and just realized like this guy is not only big, but he can play. And again, you can't teach height, but a lot of people have been tall. He's good. And I, and I think that, you know, I said to a scout when he was uh, with the uh, Phoenix Suns, I said, it's a shame because I think he might get caught up in the politics, uh, you know, because they'll focus on, well, he's not as fast as somebody. They'll find things to justify their actions. And I'm not want to get too deep in that, but Alec knows exactly what I'm talking about as well as everybody else. But, you know, I, I really, really very proud of, of that. He, you know, put on a Panther uniform and really uh, he's incredible to this day. He's an incredible player. I, I see things that go on, but Alec know that, that uh, very much respect from a basketball perspective and a personal perspective, because you carry yourself well as everybody does here on the screen, you know, that I see, but uh, we're very, very proud of you. That's for sure. That's for sure. I appreciate that, Doug. I really do. And I, I have to, it makes me think back of, um, I don't know if you remember or not, but when I think a sophomore in college, I think we had just finished playing in the NCAA tournament. And I think you had talked to my dad after that year. And up to that point, playing in the NBA was like, you know, that would have been 
great and all, but it wasn't at like the forefront of my mind. And I think you would talk to my dad and my dad, I think relayed your guys' conversation to me, like going into my junior year of college, like, Hey, like you need to start thinking that this is a real possibility. You know, whether you had, you know, you had talked to the people that you were connected with, you know, scouts and whoever, and you had kind of told my dad, and that's what kind of lit the fire under me at that point. And all of a sudden I didn't want to just play professional basketball. I wanted to get drafted. I wanted to play in the NBA. So um, I do have to thank you for that. And I, you know, thank you for those words as well. Still doing it, still doing it to these days. Absolutely. Well, I tell you hey, what. Boo. Um... Hey, Boo, can I, can I change the subject? And I, I, I want to hear the guys that played for Coach Brown talk about, you know, like the way he ran his program. Because I'm 60 years old. I've been, you know, I played my sports and I um, have coached kids and everybody else for years and, you know, followed it. And one mm -hmm. thing I find is that, like, the one thing, thing in common of every coach that's really good is that they don't put up with any crap right like they say this is how we're going to do things and you're going to do it this way or not I remember watching Kevin Brown's teams play and I would say to myself they guard like college teams play like I remember when I moved up to division two which is nothing near where you guys are playing I just remember how hard it was just to get open to catch the ball to start the offense you know what I mean? Like people guard you and that's the way his teams guarded when they were in high school. And I used to tell my friends, I'm like, I go watch these guys play. It's incredible. They just like, they get right in your face and guard everything. Um, you guys, you guys that play for coach Brown, can you talk to that? Speak to that a little bit. Good question. Because uh, right now I'm getting ready to get into uh Sorry, boo. Of, uh, of asking questions. So that's a good question. So please, the guys that play for Kevin Brown, please answer that. Go right ahead. Well, I think I'll jump in. Um, I mean, it was just uh, it was just a different standard um, from day one. Um, you know, the the optional lifts in the summer were made very clear, not optional. The optional open gym on a Sunday with, uh, with uh, you know, nobody else in town knowing we were there were not optional. Um, you know, you didn't miss stuff. If you miss something, you know, we were, we were going to be held accountable for missing that even in the off season. Um, not necessarily by the coaches. Once he established uh, with that first year, those seniors, you know, the Matt Goldens, Mike Reeder, Matt Nicholson, those guys my first year. Um, and then it just continued on. If, you know, if you miss something, your teammates were going to hold you accountable. You know, if you miss the lift, you better be there tomorrow and you're going to be doing double and, you know, probably some form of conditioning, something to hold you accountable for being there. Yeah. Um, there was no, there was no policy on those things. It was just, it was self-governed. It was, you know, he instilled a culture in us that this is the way it is. You know, you know, Dyreek is telling that story about his open gym. I mean, I was yeah. sitting there right. like, Coach, we we need this guy to get where we want to go. And you just gave me the best guard in the gym other than me and the three best screeners. And you want me to go, you know, torture him for two and a half hours, three hours in an open gym. He goes, <laughs> yeah, because if he, if he makes it through, he'll be fine. We'll never have to worry about it. And, and so it was just, it was a standard. It was self-governed, but at the same time, the details were set in stone by the coaches. I mean, we watched more hours of film in high school than I did in college. And Tom Crane was wow. a film yeah. guru, but he would have one edit of something that he wanted you to watch. Coach would have hours of film. It could be our film. It could be film of practice. It could be film of the opponents. Um, he's one of the few coaches that I've ever in my life, other than at the college level where they have access to everything, he would send guys out not to go watch a game, but to go film games to yeah. then be able to use that to scout opponents. Yeah. Um, Nobody you know, we knew. Yeah, we knew details. I mean, we knew what the eighth guy on the bench was going to do the first time he touched the ball. We knew it was going to be, you know, a lazy pass or a scared dribble. Like we knew every detail these guys were going to do. And I, I can remember, 
you know, Morton. I love the, right I love the terminology, uh, scared dribble. That's yeah, good. Uh, and and yeah. he knew it. And, he, and you, though. you could see it. Yes. Yep. I mean, he would have us running defensively the other team's offense. Um, and, I mean, I can remember Morton with a, a team that was expected to win the middle line out of that year, my freshman year. We would jump the cuts. We would jump their cuts, jump passing lanes, and they just threw the ball repeatedly to us. Right. And it was the, it was just a, a very high-level detail, and it was top to bottom. I mean, it, if there was a guy that was going to get in the game, and and we knew what their tendencies were. And if we slipped up the next day in practice, we would watch that film and we would, you know, I felt bad for the guys who went in and in the last four minutes of a game with us up 25 because yeah. they didn't miss out on film. They got they got <laughs> tortured gonna, just like I did there, right? being in the stands. <laughs> I love it. So, I, I love it. The so Scott that, report. Let Dyricus jump in here. You can talk yeah. a little bit about it. Like some you've never seen before. Like for me, it was brand new for me. I mean, the scouting reports were so detailed. Uh, you know, right hand, uh, right hand dominant. You know, so much, so many things in the scouting report that you knew about your guy that if he scored on you, you felt bad. Like you felt <laughs> like it's no reason why they should be able to score on me because the scouting report is so detailed. And that's what for me. It wasn't a middle line eye guard that I could guard. That's what coach would always say. <laughs> you can't guard right. a middle line eye guard, so how are you going to guard anybody else? So it made me feel like, man, like I took defense so personal because of that. Like, but he knew specifically for me that would get me fired up. Like that's what got me going. So scouting report was it, it made the game easy. Like the film. And he was so detailed. We knew, like Matt said, we he, we knew the other team's plays. We knew what they were running. We knew the out of bounds plays. We watched so much film. He would even hold it. We had accountability charts on film where you're just like you're sitting in the in the film room, just like he pauses <laughs> it so much that you're doing something wrong. But this time he, he doesn't see you on this one. So you're just sitting there like, please don't see me. You know what I mean? Please don't see me out of position or out of stance because you're getting that sprint. And I mean, it's, it, you're getting sprints. Like it's, it's legit. If you did some 30 times wrong, you got 30 down in that. It's like not a game. So every time he was, like he got to the point great where- great coaches do. Great coaches yeah, hold you exactly. accountable. It, he they got make to the you point scared. Here. You don't want to go to film room on Monday because you're like, no, he's going to be- No, yeah. So you start right. feeling, start understanding how you actually look on the court while you play. And right. I think that that's something that we started to understand. And, and before you knew it, like, it wasn't even coaching film. He let us run film. Like, it was times where it'll be, we'll have last hour a class or something, and it's an open, like, you know, it's something easy or whatever. Right. It's pretty open period. Like, and so we'll go to, to the film room, and we'll have schedules where we're watching film with each other. You know what I mean? So it's like, all right, here's the film. Um, you're we're making our own ability charts for each other, right? And then um, we watch one of his games, get an accountability chart for him from back in college. But it it was yeah. to the it's point that a, the culture was, was established. It was established, and we were all you know stems of each other. Cool. Well, I got a question here from Jeff Taylor, and this is for Randy. I like to ask Randy who it was that he looked up to when he was coming up in Washington basketball. Also, what was so special about the Washington Morton rivalry of the late seventies? Well, I think I've already spoken to the person that I looked up to the most was, uh, uh, my brother, Jerry and, uh, and Dave Dingledine, like, he was my guy. Like I'd watch him play, and if you ever saw the stats on Dave Dingledine, you're talking about a guy who's like six foot two, who shot like 800 free throws in his career. 800 is probably a lot, but some ridiculous amount because he just had a way of taking people under the basket, and even if you were bigger than him, you were not going to stop him. So I would say no.
uh, the rivalry with Morton, that was, that was tough. I mean, those guys were loaded. They had, they had Bla- Blaze Bajeski, who was like 6'9", and probably wore a size 40-inch, 40 45 sleeves on his shirt. He had the longest reach of anybody I've ever seen in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, Andy Kaufman, Weibel, Bontemps. They were just, they were huge. They were just, every, every guy was big. Every guy was athletic. Everybody was a good player. And they played this zone and you, you couldn't get yourself in there. Like even when I would get in the lane, it'd be all right. I'm in the lane. I got the ball. Now what am I going to do? Oh, you, turn you, around and you guys you lost just, to them two years in a row in the sectional. Your junior and senior year is that correct? No, we lost to them both years, and uh, those guys were loaded. I all props to them. I mean, yeah. I battled them. You know, I fought them. I, you know. Talk smack to him. I did everything I could possibly do to make it happen, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it was like uh, we're gonna throw it up, and if somebody misses, we're gonna get the offensive rebound, and if somebody misses that, we're gonna get another one, and we're just gonna score. Um, we weren't huge with when I was a senior. We were we were a good team. But if we could get you out and run with you, you're in trouble. I mean, we're gonna score, but when it slowed down to be a half court game. Those guys just beat us up to death. And uh, probably my biggest regret as an athlete is uh, the two games I had at the field house in the, uh, uh, against Morton. And I played like crap all the times. And it's not an accident. I played like crap because those guys knew how to guard me and I couldn't get my shot off most of the time. Wow. So. All props to them. I would have, if you'd asked me that ten years ago, I'd say they suck. <laughs> but, um, so when you know both years, uh, they beat you guys, and then they had to play yeah, 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 60, Central. Yeah, Sixty years Who old, you rooting back for? on them, like you know what? Those guys were loaded. And every time they played Central, I was loaded. I was rooting for Central. I got to tell you, man, because they had my guys. They had. Uh, the the, uh, the Jordan brothers, they had Gus, um, they had Bill Morton. They, they I was all over those guys. I Tony Gower. I, I didn't want Morton to win. Tony. I don't think I ever played against Tony Gower. He was after me. I'm old, man. <laughs> okay. All right. This is for Todd Foster. This is from uh, Washingtonian. I don't even know if that's a word. Chase Manier, the mayor's son. He says Todd Foster. He wants to know what Gene Cady said to you about bull riding in the off season. And I'm good with the call. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bull ride. All right. Bring it. Um, I rode underneath a different name, and the name was Buddy Baker, who is a sports agent now for Painter. <laughs> Um, because if I won money, it's NCA violation. So I just had to be cautious on it. <laughs> but other than that, I mean, you know, all that the rodeo stuff, my sister did it. Doug won't admit uh, to it, but he had a cowboy hat on when we're out in Wyoming. Um, God bless him. But it was... Come on, yeah, D. Lee. You gotta step in, dog. Let him finish. I, I, Let him I'll finish the game. Hat. It's down in the. I'm here in my barn, and it, I got it all. It's different <laughs> nowadays. Come on, Doug. Yeah, well, but uh, you know what? Uh, though the whole thing is, <laughs> we we're sitting here talking about all our stuff. I mean, I am blessed to be with these guys. And you talk about Randy Holsar back in the days. How many times did they have cell phones to watch them play? Nowadays, we have pictures and all that stuff. You sit there and you talk about, like, I walked into Washington. I went to Pleasant View, a small grade school. My dream was sitting there going to the Panther Den and listening to the band, which was awesome, 
bless them, they were the best of just the beat, watching the guys. And you talk about just not Randy. You talk about the other guys that played in the past that don't have the, you know, any school. They don't have the video. That is a blessing. And I think that is getting called out too much. I mean, like, they don't – people don't see that. They were players, too, and, like, Clint Reed and, and Chuck Bruner that were our stat guys and Larry Sagan. I mean, yes. all those guys yes. were part yes. of the team. And I don't get into records. Everybody goes, oh, how many points did you make? I don't care. It's about winning. Then I look at Who's the Cody, which was my coach. That's who I played for. When he was mad, I felt like I upset him. I got to play harder. So I just, I always felt like he was the man. So when Coach Katie, when we lost the game, I was embarrassed to go to class the next day because I let the students down. I let the coach down, I, you know, the fans, that was me. It's not about scoring. It's not about what you do. I mean, it's about winning, losing. I, mean, I just felt that was the hardest part. And when I was growing up, I was scared to walk in front of people. I would walk underneath the bleachers. True story. I would go underneath the bleachers even when I was in high school because I didn't want people to look at me just because the wow. recognition. I just wanted to go under because I watched Doug, Derek Punk, all those guys. And Matt Newkirk was my teammate, Calvin Scalp. I mean, there were seniors that took care of me when my mom died, when I was a freshman, they were, I was always walking under the bleachers and it was all about winning for the coach and for the community. That's what it's about. And Washington has produced so many good players. And I am so proud of every guy on this thing. Oh, it just tears me up because it, sometimes it gets overloaded about who scores points. It's not about that. I don't give a crap who scores points. It's about who's producing, who's playing for the, the town, and getting things done. And, man, I used to watch Doug play hard, and I wanted to be just like him. Oh, my gosh, I wanted to be just like him. Now, Randy, I was about seven, eight, and I was, yeah, digging <laughs> thistles in the, in the past. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. I was digging thistles, and we had three TV stations, so I had no idea what was going on. My dad had me back in the neck, but – I tell you what, I got your probably. I probably have your autograph on the ball because that was my biggest thing. My brother played. I, I mean, there are so many names that we need to mention that I feel bad that's not on here. I got them right here. Do you want me to read them off? Oh gosh, I tell you what, it is a. I blessing. just wrote down there a bunch of so top, many guys. Man. Yeah, read. I know. Randy, Randy, I'm going to read them up. Randy, go ahead and do yeah, it. Listen to this. And I, and of course, I'm going to miss. I'm going to miss. And I'm heavy on the guys who played on that team with uh, uh, with Benji and Jerry. But I'm Tom Adams, Virg McElfish. Oh, yeah, yeah. His Dave, shirt's up there. I used to look at his shirt. And I never knew what he looked like. It's awesome. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, he used to lay people out. I mean, he scored a ridiculous amount of points yes. before a three-point line. Dave Dingledine, John Day, Keith Bachman, Lauren Knopfsinger, Gary Church, Dave Heinold. Gary Church, Troy yeah, Tyler. I remember seeing his shirt. Yeah. Oh, you know, one of the cool things I always thought about Washington basketball is that before AAU ball, um, because, uh, because Coach Bish talked about that every time Coach Fisher. He coached my brother when he was like a junior in high school, I think. And he, but what he started was a situation where they had like a program. 
You know, like the freshmen ran the same offense as the sophomores. It ran the same offense as the varsity. You know, like these are the rules. This is how everybody's going to do it. This is, and I think I honestly, I think Coach Bisher started all that, and then it went to Westy, and then it went to Doty, and then it just moved on down. Um, I think Coach Brown probably took it to a whole nother level. But um, these guys would come before AAU ball. These guys would come back during the summertime and play. Like we yeah. got to play with Gary Church, Dave Heinold, um, uh, Jim Thine. Uh, Dennis Curley, Sam, yeah. all these guys would come to open gym and play and they were all yeah. grown men, but they were only 24, 25, 26 year old. I mean, they were good athletes. I remember every game I played, I always thought to myself, I don't know who's going to guard me, but he's not going to be Gary church. I mean, Gary hmm. church was, he was the a heck of a player. I heard that. Yeah. I heard that he was, uh, quite an athlete. Uh, one of, uh, oh. one of Washington's, Finest players, I call him Sweet Lou, Sweet Lou Griffith, who uh, who Alec introduced me to, uh, who succeeded you at my camp. He wanted to know, and it's just one player, so he doesn't want you guys to go into a bunch of players. Who is the toughest player that you played against in high school, college, or the professional ranks? That's what he wants Gun to know. Robinson. Who is the toughest player you played against in high school, college, and the professional ranks, if that applies to you? I can say Glenn Robinson. Big dog. Man Big dog. And, oh, man, he would just – woo he gets you. <laughs> <laughs> you get hey, you get in a bar fight, you better have him behind you. Oh my gosh, he was mean, and okay. that's why he was. Who, just, who he dunked the toughest on guy you went against? Oh my gosh, he was mean. How well, many commercials you seen Big Dog do? None, because <laughs> he was mean. <laughs> I understand. I understand. So you got the Big Dog in college. In high school, you graduated in '91, so. That was during uh, the Howard Nathan era. Did you did you ever have a chance to play against Howard? Who was the toughest oh, yeah. player Howard. that you uh, played against in high school? In high school, I tell you, Howard Nathan was just a wizard. Just a wizard. He would break your ankles. I love that guy to death. God bless him. I'm telling you what, man. I pray for him every day. I mean, him and his family. I mean – it's sad that I can't be hanging out with them. And that's why life is too short. Don't, don't take a day for granted. Be blessed who you compete against and, and just say, hey, keep going because you never know when they might go. Absolutely. But like Howard is a legend in Peoria. Man, you got to have an episode. Just Howard only. He is a blessing. He was my year. And I just have tears because these these younger guys never seen Howard, never had to guard him. You can't guard him. Get your foot back in the six foot by the rim. That's how you guard him because he was just nasty. He was good. He was a street baller. He could play. Man, bless him. All right. I'm going to take that over to Alec because your mom yeah. just uh, sent oh, me a boy. text saying, you better keep Alec awake. It's three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so that's actually, man, that's, that's a tough one. I, I've actually gotten to play against some cool players. Um, but I will say this one because this kind of, it has a little bit of a coach Brown story. Um, my like internet must've cut out. I didn't get to get to share one there, but um my rookie year in Phoenix, my, you know, one year I was playing in the NBA, we were playing at Oracle Arena against Golden State. And this was the year they, they had won their championship, their last championship um, that they had won. And I got matched up against Kevin Durant and he caught it in the mid post. And, you know, it doesn't matter if you're Alec Peters or if you're, you know, first team all defense in the NBA, that, that ball's going to go, like, you're going to get scored on. It's just, it's going to happen. And I did my best, contested it. He made the shot. I ran back down, played on. And I like that story because after that game, I remember 
Coach Brown had texted me and you wanted to talk, wanted to call me, wanted to talk about the game. And this was true to character that he had for his entire life. And he calls me, he said, why'd you let number 35 catch the ball so easily and score? It wasn't Kevin Durant. It wasn't one of the greatest scorers of all time. Why'd you let number 35 catch the ball and score so easily? That's just how he thought of everybody. That's just how he addressed opponents and, and people that you played against. It was always just, it was a number. He had this tendency, that tendency, and, you know, you were supposed to stop that. But obviously I didn't, I didn't argue too much with him after that. He was, he was right about that. So that, that, that's probably tell my one. More, tell us more about Coach Brown, will you, Alex? Like, like you never got your chance to talk about Coach Brown. To yeah. Talk about him. My, my favorite part every I'm year, sorry, every man. season with Coach Brown was – and, and Matt and Dyrikis, I don't know if this was – it had to have been the same with you guys, but, like, every school in the area or every – you know, they had tryouts, right? Like, there were tryouts the, the, for, for the basketball team. And Coach Brown never said, like, tryouts are on this day. It was always, here's the first day of practice. Yeah. And it just was like an unwritten rule that everybody knew who the basketball players were. And so everybody showed up for the first day of practice that was going to be on the basketball team that year. And I remember my, my senior year, we had the first day of practice, right? And you can't just like close the, you know, at a public school, you can't just close it off to everybody. So if someone wants to show up, that's, you know, their thing. We had one, one guy show up to, to the first day of practice that year. And after 25 minutes, he was in the trash can. And I think he left like five minutes later just because <laughs> like coach just, he didn't, he didn't play that way. It's like, you knew if you were on the team or if you weren't on the team. So that was, um, <laughs> probably one of my my favorite things every year with coach brown was that first day and he was like he was as happy as anybody that first day too yeah awesome that is awesome this is from uh your mayor uh one of my good friends and a guy i got a lot of respect for gary Minaire. and this question is for Dyricus. he wants to know the difference between peoria and washington Peoria had five schools at one time and seemed that a true basketball fan would cheer for who, whomever was at state. What was it like playing in a city with one school and have the whole community cheer for you when you guys went to state? Yeah, man. Well, first part of that question, just the difference for me was just the, the whole approach to the game was was different um, as far as just the 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 detail. And I don't know if that's just so much a, a Washington thing, but so much as a Kevin Brown thing. And uh, but in listening to other guys, it just it goes along with the tradition and the culture just continues to go to this day. But um, I mean, the difference for me was just I mean, uh, the the confidence that coach gave me. Um, for me, um, I felt like he really believed in me um, and I understood where he was coming from with everything that he was saying. And I knew it was out of love and out of, um, you know, wanting me to be. He saw something in me that I didn't know yet, that I couldn't see, that he was pushing me toward. And so for me, it made me want to get there. Like I didn't even know where it was at, but it made me want to get there. And for me, that's what that's what made me feel like, man, you know. I can do this, you know, and, and for me, that was big for me. And the community of Washington is like, like everyone says, like, it's like nothing. Like I've been to, like, I, I've been to Mayo Central games, you know, like when it was, you know, at the field house so packed and, you know, and it's just, that's the atmosphere like you've never seen before too. But every night, no matter who we play, a lot of times we travel, we have more fans than the other team. Oh, like wow. you, you go into these play and I had no clue. Like I get goosebumps talking about it. I get goosebumps thinking about the locker room, like every time, but you, you come out on warmups and you, you touch the sign at the top and you walk toward the floor below the bleachers and you walk into the floor. And my first experience, it was just like, Oh my God goodness the band is playing the cheerleaders are right there the 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 fans are packing the arena and you you kind of start to feel this during the jv game like it's like getting it's already starting to get crazy but when you come out of the locker room from that perspective 
is just like something you've never felt before. Like, like no matter where I've played, I played at Duke, I played Wichita State is crazy. Um, so many sold out places. And it's just like nothing compares to that feeling. Nothing compares to that support. Like it's it's almost a handicap for another team. Like seriously, just to go in there and try to beat us on that floor is it's really it's like they're a, a extra player on the floor out there. And when we went to state, it was like something like like I said, like you just it was magical. It was all my first year. Everything was just we went downstate, we beat Central, and the whole way it was from the first game of the season to the last, the support never wavered. It never changed. Every season has ups and downs. It never changed. Even when we were down in game, 17 points, crowd goes crazy. We come back and we win. Like, it's, it's things like that that they fed us with that belief, the community, and that's why, you know, you feel like you're playing for a town. You don't feel like you're right. playing for yourself. You feel like right. the whole thing is an out-of-body experience. For me, it was like, man, I feel like it's bigger than me. And I and it just resonated with me that way. I always felt that way to the point that I didn't want to, I didn't even want to get hurt. I was scared to get hurt because I didn't want to let anybody down in the whole town. Like I, I I played my whole senior year with a broken wrist because I didn't want to let anybody down. Like it was just, it was never about me. And that's something that I carry with me to this day. Um, you know, although we we do learn these things in life from our parents and, you know, experiences, but to get that every night and to get that support, no matter what happens, was just, it was, it was something that I hadn't experienced on that level, you know, just from an experience on a basketball court. So it's magical. It's something about it. Like I think about it all the time. That's cool, man. Boo, I was, cool. was going to mention too briefly is that we talk about coaches. I mean, the thing is, one of the things I think a lot of guys, you know, Derek Funk, I can go down the line of players. He, Randy, you mentioned Troy Tyler before, who was a great, great player. Matt oh, Newkirk. Great player. Matt, Matt Newkirk, incredible athlete. I mean, it, it was Matt pushing six, six foot two and he could fly, right? There's a lot of, a lot of players. But I think you have to mention too, really though, Boo and all the guys. One of the main things we talk about, uh, Kevin, because he was there, and you know, and, and uh, thankful for all the years and so forth. But you know, you got to go back, and you got guys like Dick Van Syok, who's not who's not only known in Washington, he's known everywhere, right? So, so when Dick Van Syok would walk in, when I played for Coach Steve Doty, and I'll get to that in a second, it was like a respect. Like he, you know, he was big in Peoria, he was big everywhere, and really, you know. <laughs> put us on the map in a lot of ways, not taking away from any previous coaches, but, you know, he, he would give a lot of props to players from Washington and give us a lot of credibility. Uh, and he wasn't even there anymore. And I think when you talk about, you know, uh, Chuck Busher, Busher and, and, you know, uh, Chuck Westendorf, uh, Steve Doty, I mean, coach Doty, I played for when I went into college, I was 17 years old, my freshman year in college. Right. So I was kind of a year younger than everybody else. So, you know, I'm 17 in college starting as a freshman at games at Texas A&M at point guard, believe it or not. This might shock you all. <laughs> but <laughs> at point guard against Alvin Robinson and, you know, uh, Arkansas. Right. And, so, and so the reality, though, that Coach Doty, the reason I was able to do that is because Steve Doty prepared me fundamentally. And I, and I think that is such a difference when you can walk into, and I think that's what Coach Brown did. Uh, that's what Van Syok started is that fundamentally – we were just light, and I'm sure all these guys can say this. You're going in. I heard I heard Dyrica speak about it earlier. You know, Matt. It's like you went in, and I was already ahead of guys. I remember when I showed up there. I'm like, hey, you know, ball you man relationship. All these things going on, and all these terminology. I'm like, all right, I had that down. So it allowed me to step in and play because yeah. of the type of coaching. And you know, I only went to one basketball. I think I went to Eureka College basketball camp. You know, invited all the Nike camps and never went. Um, and it was a part where, you know, why? Because, you know, Steve Doty prepared me. And, and I and I think that was a part that, you know, I give a lot of credit there. I think the players, it's hard to mention somebody in high school, boo, I was going to say. But I think in college, Akeem Olajuwon, for me, uh, was the best college player that I ever played against. Um, you know, and, and just incredible, incredible. Hall of Famer. Yeah, incredible pro. 
Um, of course, Jordan at the next level, there's no doubt about it. You know, I mean, he was to guard him and to play. I had one of my best preseason games against him, but I always, you know, told him that, Mike, you're going half speed. So that's why I was able to do that. <laughs> you know, but, 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 but the reality of it is, is that it's, uh, you know, I think at the high school level, Boo, like I even hate to say it as you guys probably do, because playing against guys there in Peoria, for me, that was like to go and play. Those guys were my friends, you know, Gus Mason's. I still keep in touch with Gus, you know, um, I think Howard Nathan, you know, he passed away. I mean, guys don't understand like Howard Nathan and Boo, you know this, right? But uh, Howard kept in touch with people um, forever. Like that guy, I mean, I would text Howard, I would call him, you know, and, and people probably never knew Doug Lee knew Howard Nathan, um, you know, David Booth and all these guys and so forth. I think, I think that's the unity that we're talking about when you brought this show out, Central Island Basketball, right? That's where right. I think is pretty awesome about this. Well, I'm, glad, I'm glad that you mentioned them because one of your former teammates, this is uh, not so much a uh, a question, but a testimonial. He uh, he said that you made him better. This is from Chris Herman. Mm. He said that you made him better in practice and open gyms because he had to guard you. And uh, he said he wasn't known for his defense, but he credits you for any success that he had as a ball player. That's what he says outside of his father. Well, I tell you, Chris. And Chris knows. I mean, Chris didn't play for us his senior year, and that's a whole nother story. But the reality is, and I don't say this lightly, if we had Chris Herman, we would have won the state title. You know, we were ranked. Oh, you think you would have got us in the field house? Yeah. I oh, know. yeah. Hey, I know. What to go? How many overtime? Come on, boo. Come on, boo. I mean, we throw, we throw in Chris Herman in the mix. Um, I'm telling you, you know, we, we had a young, young, young inside guy. But if Chris was there. But I'll, I'll tell you, Chris is probably – He's like know, Tony Kukoc. What all right, I'll have, to bring it, I'll have to bring in Ivan Stone on that, who has a question for you. Ivan, uh, Ivan <laughs> here we go. Okay, Ivan, okay. I know, I know. All right, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go ahead, Doug. Doug. I'm, 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 I'm going to go ahead and read this. Doug. In the Cable Car Classic. Oh. San Francisco, December 27, 1985. If, okay, let me back up a little bit. When I was in high school, my my senior year, know, the cable car we beat plan. Doug Lee and Washington <laughs> in the sectional Lee, in double or triple overtime, ending the great Doug Lee's high school career. Hmm. So three years later, you're playing against the star of our team, which was Ivan Stone in the Cable Car Classic. San Francisco. And, uh, he said that he was happy to see you in San Francisco. He was playing for Lamar, and you were playing for Purdue. He said that you didn't give him no debt, no love whatsoever, that you were so focused on the game that you couldn't show any love to a Central Illinois person. So he wants to know, where was the love, bro? Yeah, it was all about winning. Let, let, me, let me tell you something, Bob. I, I'm going to go through Tony Weisinger. I'm going to go through Doug Altenberger, who I adore, I adore Tony. Let me tell you, I knew exactly who Ivan Stone was. The reality, the reality was is that, um, and I guess guys can attest to this, that I played against, right? Doug Altenberger and I were, were, were good friends. The minute that ball tipped off, I was nothing but business. And right. even during the tournaments, I mean, I, I remember Kenny Smith when we were an all-tournament team in Dallas, and I saw Kenny years later, and he goes, I remember you playing in Dallas and so forth, man, but you wouldn't say anything. You'd talk stuff on the floor, but you wouldn't say anything afterwards. I literally, during those days, we lost to Kenny Smith during that. We're ranked number two or three in the country. I'm still mad about that, right? I, it, you know, <laughs> so, 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 the re, so the reality of it is, um, you know, I, Hell yeah, yeah. I, I'm competitive as anybody else is, but Ivan Stone probably, and I joked about Ivan Stone in the last thing, so he knows, right? I got huge respect for Ivan Stone. But the reason when you do in those situations, because those players made you so much better. So you if I that. ever, and this is just how I was, right? If I ever gave you an inch, right? I feel like I'd give you more. I couldn't do it. 
And I so you know, if we got I together understand. now, I, I owe you a dinner for that, the way I acted then, <laughs> Ivan. But but the reality of it was, I was just all about all about winning, you know? Well, you and, know what? I know, I know that you're going to be in Peoria soon, and I'm going to be taking a couple of trips. We got to keep in touch and try to coordinate our schedules so the three of us can at least go out as uh, as well as others. Is that cool? Uh, awesome. Yeah, I'd love to see Ivan again. So, you know, uh, yeah, I, I'll definitely uh, build a harass him a little more then. That's cool. That is cool. Now, Alec Peters, here's the next question for you. And wait a minute, there's an excellent question coming up uh, for uh, Mark Roth, or excuse me, Matt. I mean, Mark worked for me. So same I'm sorry, thing. Matt Roth and uh, Darikas. But this is this one's for Alec. What do you like about Europe? And what don't you like about Europe? And what is going to be the first thing that you're going to eat when you get to the United <laughs> States? That's a great question, boo. Mama's That's a kitchen. Great question. Pancakes. Well, go ahead. <laughs> Marcy's pizza. Wow. That's a loaded question. What do I like and not like about Europe? What I don't like about it is that it's not America. Um, <laughs> no, it's just, it's, it's an eye opening experience, man. Like these countries, they have their own little world, you know, they're, none of them are similar at all. Like here I am in Spain, everybody's so relaxed about everything. Like there's like a four day work week. Like there's many days where nothing's open, like, cause people are just taking the day off. And, um, you know, one of the cool things about America is like, you know, everything's greater, bigger. You can be as big as you want to be. You can, you're, you know, you're, you got a bunch of go-getters in America that are up early in the morning and they're working until, you know, until the sun goes down. So that's, that's like, you know, the, the one thing sometimes I miss about a, a America is just that atmosphere. Sometimes things move at a little bit of faster pace and you just, you have the, you know, that environment, you know, here in Europe, you go sit down for lunch, like these people sit down for two hours and they just want to have like the experience and sip their coffee afterwards. Like, you know, in, in America, it's like 30, 45 minutes. I'm in, I'm out, I'm back to work. I'm on with my day. Um, <laughs> so I miss that a little bit I miss kind of that way of life um you know what I'm used to and all that and being back home um for all of that what I like about it is is you will not find a more like passionate groups of people you know in, in your life like whether it's you know soccer teams basketball teams they treat it all like it's life or death and it, it cuz there's no show to it especially with basketball there's no like entertainment like there is in an NBA game or you know there's no like you know people aren't throwing stuff into the into the bleachers for the fans um there's no you know video um uh, things going on before the game you know after the game there's no entertainment aspect to it so these fans they'll still show up an hour and a half before the game and i've been escorted into a re into arenas by policemen in riot gear I've had coins thrown at me, um, you know, on the bench during games from these fans behind me saying whatever in their language, cussing me, doing whatever it is that they would do. I've had fireworks and people fighting in the stands um, in some of these games. It's just you will not find a crazier, more passionate group of people. And I love it. Like, I love every every second of that of that environment. And um, it's just it's unmatched. It's unmatched anywhere else. So what is the first thing that you're going to eat when you get home? In Mama's Kitchen. Is it Mama's Kitchen or is it Chipotle, uh, which I know is one of your favorites? Yeah, it's Chipotle's, Chipotle's always within the first or second day. That and Chick-fil-A. Um, you just you can't find that anywhere. But, yeah, my, my mom makes a mean chicken parmesan. You, she just – you can't – I can't replicate it on my own. It's just it's, – it's her – her love and touch. So uh, that's, that's also on the menu for sure. But that's, believe it or not, that's not an infrequent question. That's, that's something month to month. I think about like, man, what am I going to, when I get home, what's the, what's the first thing right. I'm going to have that taste of America back. That is cool. Now this is for a lady. She wants to, uh, to be anonymous. So I'm not going to mention her name, but this is for Dyricus and, and Matt. Did you watch your former teammate? Of course, it's a, a Colton not Underwood. Did you did you watch your former teammate Colton Underwood on The Bachelor? And if so, what did you think? Did you did you think he was sexy? <laughs> what? <laughs> Come on, Darius. Tell us what you think. 
Oh, man. Go ahead, Oh. Come on, Matt. No, man. you go first, man. Back in the day, back in the, back in the day, me and Cole made some, we made some songs and everything, rap songs, and he had a, he had a song on there about a, about a girl. I'm not gonna express the lyrics and nothing like that. But yeah, when I saw him on The Bachelor, I was like, wow, you know, I didn't, I didn't know you had that up his sleeve, but you know, <laughs> he had a few tricks in the bag that I didn't even know about. <laughs> <laughs> and I would say, I, what about I would you, say, Matt? Come on, Matt. Tell us about Colton Underwood. Oh man, I did. I don't. I always get an argument with my wife over that show, and and uh, I can't say I watched it too closely, but I think he, uh, I think he had a little bit better attire than uh, a certain prom picture I remember from my senior year that he was at. So, uh, I, you know, I think he's, I think he's doing his thing, and it certainly shocked me. Uh, to see him come on the show and uh i know uh at least from what my co-workers tell me on their weekly update of the show um they they enjoyed a lot of his season so they definitely <laughs> <laughs> okay but you know what fellas you know this this show is supposed to be an hour and 15 minutes long we we had two hours this has been excellent but um I wanted to have you guys on because I have much respect for Washington basketball. And those that don't know, now they know that uh, you guys held your own. You guys held your city down and you were uh, formidable. So was there anything that each one of you would like to say about the city of Washington? Uh, but before that, there were some other questions here uh, that came from um, Ben Ryan. Uh, who was a great player at Washington, and Devin Vanderheit, who is the latest. Oh. Great. Devin Vanderheit just, just made all guys, You guys kind of answered their questions, but I wanted to give them a shout out that uh, that they did ask uh, some questions of you guys as well as others. But if there's something that you want to say to the city of Washington, everybody that's watching, please go ahead right now. Yeah, well, B. I mean, like I always say, I can't thank that city enough for me. Um, it's I've experienced things in my life that you know, I probably would have never experienced. I lived in, lived outside the country, been to about ten to about thirteen countries, and lived in about four of them. And I know none of that would have happened for me in, in my life if it wasn't for the city of Washington. And uh, man, that. The whole city is with me with in my mind and my heart every day. And um, all I wanted to do my whole time there was to inspire um, people after me to be better. And when you when you mention the Devin and uh, you know Ben guys after us, it means a lot to me because that was that was the goal, you know, just to be an example and to extend the culture and keep it going and keep the 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 you know the Washington Panther mentality going. And, uh, you know, just do it for my brothers. That's what it was all about for me. And the city alone, I just wanted to say thank you. So that's all I got. Excellent. Excellent, Dyrikas. Please jump I'll in. Go, I'll go, guys. I'll go next. Here, here's the thing is that I can remember, uh, you know, being on that national stage. And, and this happened to me many times. I don't know if all you guys face this, but – they would write in the program when we would go to different tournaments at time and not a knock to Peoria because I much love for Peoria, but they would write Peoria, Illinois behind my name. And I remember a dozen times going to guys say, get that other cross it out. When you introduce me, it's got to say Washington, Illinois. And I had guys say, I don't know where Washington, Illinois is at. And I would say, they're going to know where it's at now. And I literally would have those conversations with, with the PA announcer and I used to check it. So I would check it when I get it and say, they're gonna announce Washington, Illinois. That's how proud I was to be from Washington. And I also think to mention, you know, I know a lot of times people don't like uh, athletes commenting on political things, uh, but I'm old enough that I, I think I can have a political opinion. Um, you know, Gary Manier, as far as Mayor Manier, as we know him, has been so supportive of athletics within our city. And if anybody thinks like at a college that athletics doesn't have an impact on the university, it drives a lot of things in the forefront, like it or not. 
but I think uh, our mayor has been very supportive of our athletics. And, and for me, that is something that I think people underestimate. Uh, but, you know, very proud just to be from the city. And like I said, it says enough, man. I fought to make sure in Washington, Illinois, even when I was in the NBA, they never would do that hardly. And I'd have to go correct it and say, would you just please say Washington, Illinois? And, you know, I wouldn't do that unless I was just proud. And to this day, I still, a Washingtonian, yeah, it is a term. And even though I live in Las Vegas for 21 years, I'm a Washingtonian and have family and support that. So uh, it, it is very important. That's cool. Todd? Um, I have a heart for the town. My biggest thing is I grew up there. Uh, my whole life has been here at Purdue coaching or doing still with the men's basketball and I still say hometown is Washington Illinois because I'm proud of it and I am just always supportive Dick Van Syke that coached you know 15 years there my mom was a cheerleader for him when my mom died when I was little he came through the line I remember him and then I had to go against and play against them. So little things like that means a lot. And then Coach Wessendorf coached one year there. And he was a long legend for Manuel. And he, he brought his grandson, and they came over with me this summer, the past summer, and did a golf tournament. And that's the friendship you have. It just means a lot, and it just – it carries on. Central Illinois is basketball. I've argued it so many – I just go against these Indiana people on basketball. I says, Illinois will kick your butt, especially Central Illinois. There is no question. And I'm just so proud of um, where I grew up. And I just, I believe in it and I'll never lose respect of it. And I just, my biggest thing is coach Doty helped me coach greeter in grade school, my parents, my, you know, all the friends, my teammates, that's what makes it better. Matt Ross, you know, dad and I played against each other and pick up games at since of grade school. Alec Peters, you know, his dad and I went to grade school together. I mean, that's what makes the community strong. And even though I'm not there, I'm part of it. And I will always be part of it, no matter where I live. And it's just amazing. And like, Boo, you and I talked about, I remember you coming over there doing your workouts at camp. So... Anybody from Peoria come over, you're more than welcome to come to our gym in the barn and work out. I'll work you out or whatever it is, our Airbnb. We'll have fun. But I am proud of everything, and I'm proud of everybody that's come through that community because they're the ones that helped me get to where I'm at today, and I am blessed. So that's thank awesome. you, Boo, for everything. You're most welcome, my brother. You're most welcome. Alec Peters. Yeah, Washington's always going to be home, you know, no matter where I play or where I'm at in the future. Um, it doesn't matter. Washington is it is home, and it is always the coolest thing to me when people ask me where I'm from, and I get to pull out my phone, go to the map, and zoom in on central Illinois and show them, you see this town, Washington? That's where I'm from, and um, you know, it's just, it's a motivator to be from that place. It's just such a prideful place and it'll never lose that either. And, and every summer that I'm home and then I'm back and that I get to set foot, you know, on that gym floor in that town, um, just drive around, uh, drive by, you know, the house I grew up. Um, it's just, it, you can't replicate it. And it's just an amazing feeling. And it just kind of re recharges me and, and gives me the, the energy to do it again, uh, the next year. And, I'm so thankful for that. I'm so thankful I grew up in a place that I'm proud to talk about, proud to say that my family's from. And 
um, you know, I, I look forward to the day, you know, I have a family of my own that I'm going to take them there someday. And, and so they can have a little bit of that feeling. So, you know, I, I'm truly, truly thankful to be from a town like Washington. That is awesome. Well said, my man. Matt Roth. I mean, it's it's the ultimate home. I mean, it's hometown. Um, you know, to this day, I've got a young family. You know, I've got two boys that are going to be seven and five this summer. Um, and, and they already know. They We make trips back. You know, I, I'm fortunate enough to be able to officiate the TOC now um, in November. Um, again, for the, let's be the second year back. Um, and so they get to go to the Panther Den. They get to experience those games. Um, and and as a dad now, there's that excitement of, you know, they don't want to go. And, and Todd, you echoed this. I argue Central Illinois and Washington basketball in particular is different and better than anything I've seen in the Fort Wayne area. Um, and my, my boys, we go to a game and, and we'll be on the drive home. And it's, you know, that wasn't the same as going to the Panther Den. Uh, you know, they, they know that at a young age. And I just, you know, even though we're, you know, in the Fort Wayne area, they know it's home. The Some of the best basketball camps they've been to have been the Washington ones that we've made it back for. Um, and, and that's a priority to, you know, Lindsay, my wife and I, um, you know, it's the ultimate hometown. It's, you know, you know, Todd and, and Doug and, and Alec and, and everybody's talked about it, Dyrikis and Randy. I mean, it's, we won for the community. We played for the community. We put at times the community on our back and at times the community put us on their back um, and, and pulled us along and, and that hasn't changed. Um, and, you know, you know, we, we mentioned, you know, Mayor Muneer several times, you know, and, and, and the, my love for him and what he's done for the community um, for years and years, um, you know, it, it seems like, you know, when you talk about Washington now being away, you know, the athletics, the basketball hasn't changed. Um, and, and from that standpoint, the mayor hasn't changed. He's been there. He's been present. He's been passionate about it. Um, and he's, he's never once, you know, held back on, on his passion for the community. And, you know, we mentioned several coaches, um, you know, I can remember going to those Washington basketball camps with Westy and Doty and, uh, Coach Bisher, I can remember him. I can remember his son recruited me to Bradley all those years ago, um, and and oh, just yeah. the the coaching tree that's there, um, you know. And and ultimately, you know, some of my toughest days losing family, losing you know dear, I mean, family heroes while I was at IU. And before the sun rose the next morning, Coach Brown was at my dorm door. You know, it, you know, he came to get me to bring me home to be with family while my family, you know, had to deal with the loss. And and, and those are things, you know, and, and, you know, God rest his soul. And, and I know he's looking down on us and, and the guys who played for him and certainly everybody who knew him, he made an impact. Um, it, and the values at the core of what Washington basketball stand for are you know values that are they are not going to go away they've shaped the community they've shaped you know everybody on this phone call over generations and it's a special thing and there's not a tuesday night friday night saturday night that i don't know who's playing washington and, and what the score is and more yeah. often than not i i know what the scouting yeah. report's going to be on whoever they're playing and 100%. it's you know five hours away or not that doesn't change and and the passion for it and then you know the last thing I've got is just the the brotherhood I know I've got a database in my phone of all the guys that I played with that I've come across with you know that I've stayed in touch with so amazing at that and I mean I feel like even though I was in college I watched Alec grow up you know I watched him mature I watched him play at Valpo followed Dyrikis the whole way, even though I tried to convince my coaches that they should offer him a scholarship at IU because he was better than the point guards we had at the time. Like, Damn. It, it's just a brotherhood. That's you know, I tried, Di. I tried. Hey, I love it. I love remember it. I wore, remember I wore a Bradley shirt into your IU press conference. <laughs> I know. You missed the memo that day, but that's all right. It's all love. It's all love. But, and, and you know, and, you know, certainly Doug and – 
you know, Doug's played a huge role in, in just being a mentor, you know, even though we're on completely different sides of the, of the world, you know, whether it's through Facebook or, you know, different things, you know, he, he you know, makes an impact in my life. And, and Todd, you know, as a, the ultimate competitor, I just, you know, you know, I know I could pick up the phone and call him any time of day. He's going to answer, you know. And, you know, that's just – that's the brotherhood that is Washington basketball, and I'm grateful to be a part of it. That is cool. Big props, Matt. Big props, man. All right, the senior of the bunch, uh, Randy. Um, senior? Come on, man. Grandpa. Come on, he's got, Grandpa. Hey. Uh, you know, Randy. You kinda, Randy, you, you already know it. I got – you already know I got mad respect for you, man. That's why I wanted you to come on. I know you were a great player, but you're well versed on on everything Washington. So please uh, tell me what your city, what your city means. All to right. You. So my my ending thing would be that I want to say that there wasn't one time in my whole life that I didn't leave that locker room in Washington and go up that little uh, stair and go out on that floor with all those fans screaming their heads off and the uh, and, and the pep band playing. And every single time I went out to that, you know, and then you, you go out and then you, you line up and then you're gonna do your lineup drills. Every single time I did it, I thought to myself, I am the luckiest guy in the whole world to be doing this. Wow. Like, I cannot even believe I'm doing this. I cannot believe that, like, I watched all these guys do this and now I get to do it. Like, it was crazy for me. And uh, it was the best experience of my life. It's changed wow. me. Um, it, it, it's made a difference in, in how I live my life. I've got five beautiful children and uh, um, and I got to tell you, Doug, the stuff that you said about me is like, that means so much to me because, um, because I, I, you know, I idolize people too. I idolize Dave Ding, or Dave Dingledine and John Day and Keith Bachman and Lauren Nossinger and Gary Church and David Heinold and all these guys. And I wanted to be just like them. And, uh, and then you find out that you were watching me and doing the same thing. And, and that's what Washington basketball is all about. It's all about the fact that this thing has gone on from generation to generation and everybody has done, you know, the same thing that I did, which is wish that I could be that guy. And I got a chance to be that guy. And, um, I don't know. The only thing I got left is I got to make sure and, and, and talk about my buddy, uh, Rod Golden. Rod Golden, uh, he was a, a, he was an all-conference player on my high school team when I was a senior. And he was an all-conference player in football. He was an all-conference player in baseball. He's probably the best athlete overall I've ever seen in my whole life. And he had a huge impact on what happened to me because I always wanted to try to do as much as Rodney did. And uh, so I'm going to leave it there. Guys, I, I can't even believe I got a chance to be with all of you, but um, you guys are studs, all, every one of you. And I've been paying attention to your careers as they've gone along. And um, I can't be more happy uh, to be part of this group. Thank you. You're awesome, Randy. Awesome. Boo, 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 boo. I got Randy, we love you, man. Big respect for for all those guys. West Bloomingshine, Dan Wesley, downtown, they, so many guys. But I, I, I want to say this, Boo. You have become and been an ambassador for Central Illinois basketball in so many ways and what you've accomplished from a global perspective with the Harlem Globetrotters. You'll never talk about yourself. It's one of the reasons we all love you. You know, yeah. but to know that you have brought a unity within the communities. And I think it's critical because you bridging the gap and not only including Washington and other schools, but making a focal point. Uh, there's so much respect I know for you, what you've accomplished on and more importantly, as we get off the court. Uh, but uh, just, yeah. just wanna let you know, we really do genuinely 
uh, cherish you. I know Mayor, Coach Manier, uh, Mayor Manier and everybody call him a coach because he's like a coach. But but the reality is, know the love we have for you and the respect we have for you. And Washington is there to support you in any way that you need. Wow. That's it for Curly Boo. Wow. I appreciate it, fellas. Hey, Thank much respect too. to Washington. That's why I wanted to have you guys on. Uh, Alec, I owe you a solid. It, it, it's late as hell. I know it is, bro. <laughs> He's young. He's young. I, He's I owe you a solid, bro. Young. I owe you a solid. But for all of you, much respect. And that's why I wanted to have you on. And that's why people are smacking me on my back of my neck saying, man, you got to have the Washington on. You got to have Washington. These people deserve to be recognized. So I hope this is going to be uploaded to YouTube uh, later this evening. And I hope that others will watch this and understand the prowess and the pride that you guys have for your community and for the game of basketball. So thank you so much for being on. And I hope to see you all soon. All of you. Thanks. CBG. Thank you. Bro. All right. Thanks, bro. Thank you. Appreciate it. Take care. See you guys. You. See you guys. Rikas. Congratulations yes, to yes, your sir. sister making all American. Uh, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Take care, fellas. All right. All right. You good, boo. All right. Well, that's a wrap. Uh, look here, gang. Washington, you got to give them their props. Game Much respect on. to all of these brothers that came on. And um, it just goes to show you bonding through basketball. It's everlasting. It can uplift so many people and during difficult times. I mean, Washington had a, a devastating tornado and they were led by a courageous, courageous person and their mayor and uh, Gary Miner, who helped uh, build that community back up to, way, uh, to what it is now. It's a wonderful community. Much respect for them. As far as uh, the show is concerned, I'm winding down. I just got a couple more shows left. I'm starting to get real busy, but I'm going to have on my Peoria High brethren, uh, Chris Reynolds. He is now the athletic director at, uh, at Bradley University, where my dad was the first Black player, along with Shelly McMillan. But Chris Reynolds is also a graduate from my high school. Very proud of him. He's coming on on Wednesday. So I'll let everybody know what, uh, what time we're going to do that. But I uh, hope you were able to tune in. Thank you for being here tonight. This was a great show. I had a good time being around some good dudes. Take care, and I'll see you soon. Be safe. Peace, my people. <laughs>